August 23rd meeting to order, and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I wasn't here for the July 12th. Did you get a chance to look at those? No, uh, I, I looked no, at um, the 8-9 that we're doing, right? Right. Yeah, yep. that's the one that's been reviewed. Sorry, right, yep. I, I wrote that wrong. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. No, they yeah. haven't, but I didn't finish them, so oh, okay. we're not doing them tonight. Right in review. Them. So you yes. want so to move 8-9? Yeah. Yes, yes. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Next one is small project NACC 198-128 Dale Street. Hi, basically looking at Dale Street. Uh, looking to remove an existing old deck and some concrete patio. Uh, replace it with some papers. So the um, I'm passing around some historic aerials. Everything that is out there has been out there since the 90s um, so all where he's doing the work is either existing deck or existing patio um, it doesn't fit neatly into the small project though because the the new patio is larger than the 300 square feet but it's all over existing developed area it's also in the um, the, the sub zones on the plan are incorrect that's a vernal pool off to the right there so the it's actually a 75-foot no-build setback, so this is in the no-build zone, but again, um, is, is legal existing um, structure, so I don't, I don't think it requires a waiver, which would mean it wouldn't qualify as a small project. So um, I think everything that's proposed is permittable. There's also um, some landscaping that the pervy the impervious areas will pitch to so there'll be um, plenty of area for this to right so I, it, I think it's in the package that you guys are looking at probably the third they don't have all of the materials because typically they don't review sort of things that don't show the resource area but I can pass those around This one, right? Yep. Well, it's kind of sideways. So that's the what's going around is what's on the screen. Do you have any questions? Um, no questions. I'm looking at a net improvement over the existing conditions. So uh, we're dealing with a grandfathered project that improves conditions. I think it's valid for consideration as a small project. I would ask that you know, I'm sure Jen would do it at any any rate, but uh, that the official f office file reflect the vernal pool and the 75 as being the, uh, the resource setbacks. Um. Do you want me to draw them on the plan or just, note, just, it in, note it in the decision? Just, just note it within the decision and, and, and make a notation on the plan just so the record's clear. And that's it. I'm all set. Al? No questions. Yeah. No questions. Doug? No questions. Motion? Uh, I'll move it. I'll, I'll move that we uh, consider this to be a small project uh, consistent with uh, letter L. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's And I, that. I move that we, uh, I move that we approve the small project um, as submitted with the recommendations of Mr. Lynch. <coughs> and a, do you want a pre-construction, Jen? Yeah, we should do a pre and a post. Um, there should be no stockpiling in the 100-foot buffer zone, so any material you need to stockpile should be outside yeah. the 100-foot buffer zone. 
So pre and post and no stockpiling. That's my motion. And I'm second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Next one is uh, RDA. No number, 695 Mass Ave. This is a proposal to um, crush and fill an existing septic tank and um, connect to extend and connect to sewer. So the, we did review the wetland line and um, found it to be accurate. Turn right. over to you. Just to add to what Jennifer said, uh, for the record, Jack Sullivan. <coughs> um, I'm here with the owner, John Olenio, and uh, Norris Environmental Services did the wetland delineation. Um, this is a one house up towards the old center that's still on septic and there's a gap in the municipal sewer system so they have to actually extend town sewer to their lot line and then we're going to look to make the connection and the idea was the sewer exits out the back of the house now um, it, it, there is a leach field it could be out into the wetland area we really don't know where it is there's no records of where it is and the idea was to replumb the, um, the basement and exit out the front of the house. Um, and I showed how we access to, to decommission the existing septic tank in the rear. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. It's just everyone was surprised it's still on septic, but it is. Yeah. Okay. Joe? No questions. Equally Help. surprised. <laughs> no questions here. Deb? No question, Doug? No question. Motion? be a negative determination number three with the pre and post construction. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank Give you very your, much. Um, Thank cards. You. I thought I emailed them. Did you email them to yeah. me? I think I saved them. Thanks. Next one is uh, 242-1710-0 Main Street, not the end of a DPW. Um, we reviewed this at the last meeting, and um, there was consider, oh wait, we're on 0 North Main Street, I thought we were on 271. 0 North Main Street was where uh, about a month ago we discussed the um, a certain kind of paver system that we had some concerns about its stability during a flood, basically. And um, Jack went back to the drawing board and came up with an alternative, which presented to you. Yeah. I just want to hand one something out to Oh, I had asked him for to get grab, grab some materials on the stone he proposes. Thank you. Thank you. So again, Jack Sullivan, owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. Um, last time I came before you, I had proposed a tough track paver, which um, could, could support traffic loads, even though we're not looking to use this ramp for, for traffic. This is for the fire department to access the Merrimack River in emergency situations. Um, but the concern with that is that type of paver was only um, an inch and a half deep, and they showed to put um, P-stone or a small diameter stone in there and there was a concern with the velocity and tidal action of the river that it could wash the stone out so we went back to the drawing board um, Jennifer supplied some um, literature from DEP on different types of pavers that have been used along banks and in particular one I just handed out the Dura Green um, is an open face concrete paver um, that you can put crushed stone in or you can loam and then seed um, in talking with Jennifer, she thought it would be best, and I agreed with her if we just loamed and seeded this insulation. So 
this open paver, it's um, a three inch by three inch opening and they're three and five eighths inch deep. So there's a lot more depth to this than the previous paver that I came in with. Um, the plan itself is basically the same as before. Um, the grading, the, the footprint uh, that I showed before is the same. Um, so the only real change that's before you tonight is that this different type of paver that we're proposing. Um, just to be clear, we didn't, the pavers didn't come from any DEP site. I kind of looked them up on what other ramps and things had been constructed with. Um, knowing that this is already sort of armored, I didn't think, um, you know, using concrete or was just trying to look for something that had that same porous nature as what was previously proposed, but my, what might work in this setting and certainly, um, you know, saw, saw what Jack's proposing on multiple boat ramps and other things where that were trying to be environmentally friendly. I do think the, you know, loam and seed rather than stone. And my other concern was the riprap that you mentioned on one side, um, what would be the size of that stone? Because again, we don't want to put something there that's going to get carried away and just right. be in the river on the next flood. So on one side of the ramp, right now this, this, um, this slope is all boulders. The idea would be the boulders that are excavated be used um, on, on one side of on one side of this system that they reset the boulders in place. Uh, so it really wouldn't be riprap. I'm looking to reuse oh, okay. some of the boulders to, to reestablish the, the slope. All right. That was my only concern. I saw I saw the word riprap and yep. was picturing some small stuff. Joe, no question. Just one, would we even fill the uh, crevices with? Crevices will be filled with loam, and then they'd be seeded. Loam and seeded. Yeah. Okay. Instead of instead of the stone, so it, it um, it's above the mean annual high water line. Um, so what, once they put them in, they loam and seed it. Okay. I think it depends on time of year, though. Um, you know, if you if you got it in in the super dry and we weren't concerned with rain events, then that would be one thing. But right. if it ends up being like late fall or something, if they do do the work, then maybe we would want to see turf installed in them so that you know, again, the water doesn't rise up and we lose everything in a. Yeah, because March and April, let those yeah. be underwater. Well, it's I actually, I think Jennifer has a good idea. We could just condition it that that you can you can put turf right in there you can cut it and place it in I that's probably a good condition just just in case you know they loamed and then seed it and then there was some storm event or something that you, we don't want any wash out so they can put turf plugs in if we could make that a condition I don't I, mean, I hope we're not talking just you know ornamental grass that you'd have in your yard we're talking about something that's going to be kind of like a wild mix that's going to actually have some survivability during arid times and well, wet you, times. Yeah, I mean, I would think just, if you if you use seed, you'd use like an erosion control mix or something like a roadside mix. That's yeah, gonna, no, nothing that's going to take any sort of maintenance or survive only no, only no. through maintenance. So it's something that's going to really just go fallow and gets mowed. Once right. or twice well, I mean, a year. everything that's you know, weed seeds must roam up and down the Merrimack exactly. pretty rampant. So I think this thing is, but I would assume they're going to come down there and weed whack it a couple times a They'll season. Are you going to get woody, woody That's what you need a couple times a year. Yeah. And rather than trying to get grass to establish, which may only survive one season, right? unless it's maintained. There's maybe. going to have to be some maintenance on the yeah. grass, but if there was stone in there, they'd have to maintain the stone too. So the more yeah. I thought about it, I said I'm fine with yeah. it, 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 like an erosion control grass seed because it's, it's still a steep slope. Yeah. Okay. Deb? Yeah, I was concerned about um, the maintenance of it because um, it does look uh, very pleasing to the eye, but I would think that you know if the grass grew up, you know, really long between the pavers and everything, right. the maintenance would be a concern. Right. The fire department or DPW is going to have to maintain it, and it's only it's only 10 feet wide by 30. It's not a huge area, so okay. it's something they could do if need be. They could do it quickly. Okay. Um, okay. It's not a large area. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Doug. Yeah, no Al. Just one quick one. Where are these in use now? Do you know? Are they in use locally anyway? 
I haven't used them on a boat ramp before, but I have used them on uh, commercial sites like as overflow parking when towns are concerned about impervious surface. Any place where there's where there's a steep slope and river river uh, rising and I haven't, but in this literature they do say specifically they're used for driveways, boat ramps, lakeside stabilization, and service access lanes. Okay. A lot of the uses that I found photos of and sent to Jack were of them on boat ramps. But we just don't, we don't actually know anywhere around where they're in use, so we could. I, in Ipswich, I've seen them on um, coastal driveways. You have, you have. Filled with stone, yeah. Okay, oh, I'm good then. Awesome. Motion? Ready to close, right? Um, yeah. Well, we can't, I haven't written this one yet, okay. so we, we have to, it's a three week meeting gap, so we'd miss the 21 days, so. But we will close an issue at the next meeting, and you wouldn't need to be here. Okay. So do you motion need, to continue. Do you need me to sign anything? No. Nope. Okay. Not if you just let All us continue. Just request I, that we continue. I just Close request you continue. Thank you. Let's continue. Um, who voted? Joe and Doug second. Joe and okay. Doug. No, it was unanimous. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Next one. Ah, can we do the? We should be able to do both of them at the same time because the same. Yep. Piece of land. Two four two seventeen oh eight and two four two seventeen oh seven two seventy one Stephen Street. So they are all. Oops. Thought there was a question. So just for the record. Um, Mr. Manzi and Mr. Napoli missed the last meeting, so um, they viewed the um, videotape, which is available on the commission's website, to catch up on what they missed. Good evening. For the record, I'm Kurt Young from Wetlands Preservation Incorporated. Now, this is a continuation of a hearing uh, for actually two public hearings uh, associated with the development of. Uh, parcel located at 271 Stephen Street. Uh, two houses are proposed. One is a uh, expansion of an existing uh, historic house on the property, uh, and a second new house uh, is proposed. Uh, work is uh, all within the uh, buffer zone. Uh, at the last meeting, we had a, I think a, a productive discussion with the commission over alternatives, and uh, basically uh, instructed to go back and and uh, clean up a couple of issues with regard to the proposed plan that we had. And we submitted on August 16th uh, those revised plans uh, detailing the use of pervious pavement uh, and an over operations and maintenance program for that, uh, which is actually provided uh, on the notice of intent site plan. Jennifer and I had a discussion about that earlier today. Uh, the um, commission also wanted a permanent deed restriction with regard to that uh, maintenance activity and the use of pervious pavement on the site and we've provided the verbiage for that that would become part of the deed uh, for both of these lots. Uh, we also requested uh, revised waivers because we do have uh, work uh, along the edge of the road where we have proposed a stone drain uh, to improve the drainage along the road along Stephen Street at this point. Currently, the water sheds off of the property, crosses Stevens Street, uh, and does not um, make it uh, down into a, any sort of a gutter or drain that would take the water down to a culvert and take it under Stevens Street in a more controlled fashion. Uh, so what we have done is uh, installed or proposed to install a stone drain uh, that will follow the topo and basically come into the 25-foot uh, no disturb zone at this point. Uh, some of you may recall this portion of the do not disturb zone is currently very heavily disturbed uh, and we propose to clean that up, uh, clean the soil up and revegetate uh, the entire area. Um, uh, associated with the filing we made on the 16th, I also included a revision to the project description which had a number of planting requirements and I want to be sure that we updated those uh, so that the plantings within the, the uh, 25 foot uh, no disturb zone uh, were clear. Uh, and I think um, the other thing we did was we uh, changed the design of the 
wall that separates the 25 foot no disturb zone from the balance of the sites, the two lots, uh, so that that's a solid two by two foot uh, wall. And I think uh, we had a previous plan had indicated the installation of drainage uh, dry wells uh, for the house runoff. Uh, so we've included that. And I do understand that uh, one of the things the commission asked us to do was get an okay on the driveway design from the DPW. And I understand from Jennifer that that was received and they've approved that, that they change. Were, they were fine with it. Yeah, okay, thank you. And I think aside from that, that's where we are. Thank you. Joe? No questions. Oh. Great. Uh, lot number two. Yep. Um, the, when we went out to do our site walk, uh, we located a culvert that was approximately where you show the driveway for lot number two that collected water and took it under the street and dumped it in the yard of the house across the street. And, then, and there is a, appears to be a, a manhole or a stormwater device there in that lawn. Never. I've never seen that. We located it on our site walk. Okay. We, we found it. We looked at it. We, we followed it across the street. We looked at it go across the street okay. into the property. For, first time I've ever heard of it, but okay. I, you know, yeah, I, DPW well, I guess, acknowledged that it was there as well. I guess I'm a little bit perplexed as to why you don't have it. It's, <laughs> Quite frankly, I've been on the site several times, and I thought you had the wrong site. <laughs> no, this, I, mean, I, I would have expected to have seen it. Is, so, this, is this proposed right away? I thought it was closer further to the south, if you will, or to the left of the plan. Without seeing it on the plan, I don't I don't yeah. know what it is. But I mean, I hadn't heard DP of this before. I don't quite know why. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not if I can find it. Sure. No, I, I mean, appreciate well, that. Well, DPW brought it up. I, I don't know why it's not on here or whatever, but they mentioned it mostly because they, I don't know what they were looking for, but maybe like a deed for why it cro was on private property, but they, yeah. they didn't see anything, so. Yeah, interesting. Not, uh, not I haven't seen common. it, so I, I, I don't know about it, Al. Uh, well, that's a problem, I think. Um, it's, it, you're, you're talking about uh, collecting water and, and, and taking it down to a, to a swale and constructing a swale, and there's, there's, a culvert, there's a working culvert there that already now collects the water and takes it across the street onto the property of the neighbor. I think it may pick up some of the water, but it can't because there actually is a high spot between those two driveways. So some of the water currently does sheet across the road, and there may be water that's caught in the culvert. I have no you know, qualms about that. And um, I think from the standpoint of the improvement of the drainage through this area, what we proposed is quite, quite better. But how would you know if you haven't, don't know where it is? Because you're only going to be carrying part of the, of the flow if there's a culvert in the location of a, of a lot two driveway. Al, did you say the culvert's on, on their property? Because I think the culvert's on the adjacent property, on the yeah. trustee's property. I'm, I'm more confident with your statement, Jen, from, from what I remember. But my reconnaissance when I reconnoitred the site was exactly that. And if, you, if, you, if we use some sort of thread of logic by following the thread of the brook, the culvert serves no purpose being in a buffer zone. It needs to be in the low point. So clearly, that's my recollection is where it was, is as we got off of the current existing driveway and went well to the south, 20, 30 feet, where the land drops off. Now, there is, a culvert, there is a culvert down in there. Yeah, yeah I, I think, absolutely is that what you're agree. And I think that's it. And I, I think yeah. that's it. Sure that's I thought you were saying there was something on property. It appeared to be on property when we walked it. Yeah, I think I mean, if was... you look at the bottom of the plan flags, A1 and 2 are off property, and that's kind of where you go down and into the culvert. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my recollection. Is in you know, like I came up full of ticks, so I know I was down there. <laughs> and that would be about 40 feet from the driveway location. Yeah. It was on. We were following uh, the wetland flag line, so we were we were on the property because we were on the flag line. No, not necessarily. Um, and I apologize. The, the some of the flags are off the property. You flagged off property? Yes, I did. Top, on town property, off yeah. Yeah. subject off. property. Right on, the, on the shoulder right here. So A3 is one, which is probably right at the culvert. A2 and A3. So these two are off the site. But I also go, I try to go to pick up drain destructions. So I guess if they want to go to the over half. We don't go off site, we don't know where the wetland goes. So when it's on town property or Okay. So it's not going to be an issue with the 
All right, so then, no, no it's, listen, I, I crawled around in the woods. I didn't know exactly where I was. And if if you were in, right, the, we, if we you were were in the woods, if, I can guarantee you, if you were in the woods, yeah. you were probably off the property. We were in the woods. And down in a, a little bit of a hole. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was off property. Yeah. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's clear. Had me, um, had okay. me going there, Al. No, no, <laughs> I didn't mean to. I mean, I no, that's okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Good to get it clear. You know, we, we, we were following the line. It was, it was a busy day there. Um, so I guess the only other question I have then is uh, I, I wasn't at the last meeting on August 16th, but I did uh, re refresh myself to it. But at the meeting before I was here, and uh, we talked about um, having the driveway uh, coming out the front of the house to the street, not out the side, getting it away from the resource area. And I see that you have it where we talked about not having it. Uh, two things. One is the option to have it in the front of the house in this location didn't allow for normal access and egress, and people would be backing out into Stevens Street, and we didn't think that a safe situation at all, uh, so we abandoned that. We did look at an option with the driveway over in this location here. Uh, it results or requires a very massive draining, uh, drainage, I mean, drainage and, and grading around the site. And we gave it to you. Then we went and costed it up, and it ended up being like twenty-five to thirty thousand uh, dollars. And quite frankly, it has more impact likelihood to the the wetland. It wasn't than a financial we done. It was exactly that the result of having the need to terrace in order to make the driveway work. Yeah. Resulted in you know, negative impact. More potential, potential for negative. For uh, based on stormwater runoff. So you know, as, as illogical as it might seem, but the porous pavement on that side provided a far less impact than than the than a, a directed <clears throat> sheet flow that ended up being much steeper with higher velocities getting down into that resource. Correct. So that was the logic of our well decision making. There are there are other alternatives. I, I don't agree that this is the uh, only and best alternative. But uh, I'll 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 move it down the line and let some other folks ask questions and then if need be you can come back to me. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, the way the driveway is now in Watu, how, how big is the turnaround? Well, you, you know, um, back out. Uh, cut me without my uh, slide over. Uh, it's a uh, 20 scale plan, so uh, you'll notice it's configured a little oddly, but uh, this is probably about 28 feet in, in this direction here and less in this direction, maybe 22, based on the 24 foot width of this. And right. how far how far is the house from the street? From the street? 21, 21 feet. feet. 21 feet. 21 feet. Okay. Because I, I'm looking, we're talking about alternatives analysis. Um, I'm, to, I'm thinking of setting the house back farther and putting the garages in the front. The the only impact of that is that this corner of the house would go into the no build zone. You could move the house to the right. You have a setback line on there and you're not at it. I believe that setback is, is already set by the CPA, but I'm not sure. Right, but your house that isn't. Line is the setback, I think. What does oh. the number say there? Is it 21 feet? 21 to 21. So the front side. Oh, the old property line. That line is the old. Okay. Well, again, the the subdivision, the splitting of the lot is is should not be a hindrance on this because it was, it can't create nonconformity. So, we we talked about that at well, the very that's first what, meeting. That's what I'm saying. We talked about it at the at the meeting prior to the August 16th meeting. Um, I don't understand how we ended up back. You can't here. set a lot line, causing yourself to have um, a hardship. What we did with this design, Al, is the previous design that you saw had this portion of the driveway uh, more in this location here, which would be a normal, more of a normal driveway. In fact, it was shifted over in an area that was within the 50 foot setback. At this point, it's less the area that we're taking out on the balance of the site, taking the site. So, you get a net improvement here of the conditions at the site, and you get an unsafe situation here, and a very expensive situation here. Uh, but it's but, but 
you're making it that way. That's, 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 that's self-created. This is a new lot. You're creating a hardship on a new lot. That doesn't, uh, that, that doesn't pass the stink test for me. I understand. Phil Christensen, for the record. Hi, Phil. Uh, we did the work uh, for the ZBA, and originally, that line was farther over, this house was farther back. Okay. Uh, the ZBA did not like the shape of this lot. Right they said it was too irregular. No. And that line that Jennifer mentioned right here, here. That was the original line on the plan that was developed in 1963 that the variance was granted on to create that lot. Okay. So what the ZBA said, we want your the lot dividing these, the lot line dividing these two lots moved over, moved south. And that's why this building came this way. And then in doing that, we were meeting the setback here set back here. There were a number of variances granted, and they didn't want to increase the number of variances granted, so that's why we don't have that house closer to that side lot line. But originally, our plan was to have it farther away from the wetland, but this is what ZBA approved. Make sure I'm clear on what you just said, Phil. Oh. That in 1963, 63. there was a subdivision and a variance granted that resulted in that dash line creating two lots. Yes. And that lot line still existed right up until such time as uh, did it, it expire? Wasn't, it wasn't a lot line. It was a, a variance was granted. The lot was never created. Okay. But there was a change in zoning in 72, 74. Don can I mean, the whole team tonight. Don Bornstein, Johnson and Bornstein, 12 Chestnut Street in Andover. Um, just to, to weigh in a little bit, and just to this lot line issue and the self-created hardship concern, um, I actually think the change in the lot line made us more, gave, gave us an opportunity for more compliance. That's where my your, question was going. Yes. That's, what I, that's what I think, is by shifting it further to the north, it granted more favorable conditions to wetland, any sort of wetland question, as opposed to granting a hardship, it actually relaxed some But there of was, what he mentioned before was that lot line never created a lot, so it never existed. It was just... Theoretical, it could have been created, but it never was. I don't it's always been one lot. There's never been two lots here, I guess is the, the short answer. Depends. It's a good lawyer no, answer. No Depends. two lots you have, were ever created. You, you have a plan that was approved by the zoning board that had two lots on yeah. it. What the recent zoning board action did is it allowed us to move that lot line, shift it to the south, which actually allowed us to move the house to shifted the south. Shifted it to the south. south. Didn't it not? To the north, yes, sorry. To the north. Allowed us to shift it to the north and allowed us to have more separation of that same home from the from the wetland side. It actually gave us more room to get further away from the wetland. And that was part of the you know, we went through a number of iterations with the with the zoning board trying to satisfy the historic nature of the home that exists, trying to make the location of the new home consistent with that, and also um, um, paying attention to the wetlands requirements. And that resulted in the, the lot line that the zoning board approved, which actually allowed us to do the things the zoning board wanted while still um, giving um, a lot of credence to the wetlands requirements, and in fact, a better potential situation than the original lot lines that were approved back in the 1960s plan. So I actually think the lot line change was to the benefit of wetlands protection um, and to the issue we're talking about right now, not to the detriment. I think we actually got relief from the zoning board that allowed us to keep the home and the construction further away. That's why we were able to keep the home outside the note build, and we're only here asking for a waiver of the driveway, which the regulations specifically recognize the, the board to have authority to do. Um, and what we attempted to do at the last hearing, I think, was to present that robust alternatives analysis showing what would it mean to put the driveway on the other side of the home. That's the logical alternative. Um, it would have required actually an easement on the other lot, which we would have done under that alternative. But uh, we don't have that plan in front of us. But that plan shows extensive retaining walls, steeper grades, much more um, overall impact, all that impact being within the buffer zone, although not within the inner 50 feet. Um, but our, our um, explanation of those alternatives was, in essence, we thought the plan you see before you tonight was the best, the best alternative and consistent with the language and the regulations. 
and, um, and we presented that to the commission at that time and um, are hoping that uh, we continue in that vein. I think there's good, uh, good reasons, good logical reasons, good, um, well, it's protection reasons to go with this alternative, but we put those alternatives in front of the commission and asked them to decide which they thought had the higher quality. Yeah, I'm sorry, I apologize that I wasn't here for that, uh, to, to participate in that discussion, but uh, I can't unring that bell, but I can tell you that from where I sit, I think that you need to have a better alternative than to be looking for a waiver for that driveway. I don't think it has to be there. And I think that you can, you can make it work. You can get what you want, and you can comply. I don't think you need a waiver. Yeah. I know that Phil's a pretty clever engineer. He can make it work. And, and in fact, he, he, he did produce an alternative for, for consideration by the commission and that we're talking about tonight. Um, and you know, the commission's determination is, the, is whether another alternative is practical. Is it practical? Is it practical to do it this way, having in mind all the things the commission needs to weigh, having in mind also just the goals of the project and seeing if we can make all those things work together. And, and our position to the commission was that the, the alternative you see, which is up behind you now, um, was a better, um, more practical, and that this alternative was not practical because it actually created the things we were trying to prevent through the, through the no bill. When we look at a waiver request, our mandate goes like this, avoid, minimize, mitigate. So our mandate is yours. You must first avoid, attempt to avoid. Only if you cannot avoid, then you minimize and then you mitigate. It's my opinion anyway that I think you can avoid. I don't think you have to get into the mitigation stage here. I think you can avoid it. And I think that this might be the choice that you want, but you can still get what you want and avoid it, avoid that area. I, un I understand that, and I respect the position on it. Um, our, our position on it is that the, with the waiver, it's actually a better project for wetlands protection. It's a, it's a, it's a demonstrably better project for wetlands protection, for stormwater, um, for the uh, driveway with the alternative being on the left rather than the right. Now, is it possible? It's possible to do it on the right, and Phil was able to design a plan that made it possible to do it on the right. We thought it was not better, though. It was not, and also not practical, just because of the nature of the, the potential impact. Um, and certainly the the, the necessary impact, because you're going to have increased stormwater flow, you're going to have increased stormwater velocity, um, you're going to have um, much greater disturbance in the buffer zone. And that's why we thought on balance between the two, the driveway option on the left um, was, was very practical. Um, we also added mitigation tethers. Well, I understand that would be the last step on your, on your chain, but there was substantial mitigation proposed as well, which included the porous pavement in the driveway and includes the, the complete removal of the invasives and the replanting of, of the inner buffer zone, um, includes all that stormwater improvement along the, uh, along the street, um, a number of things um, provided for mitigation on top of the driveway location just being a better location because it didn't require fairly significant um, retaining walls and site disturbance and all those other things that would have happened in the in the buffer zone, albeit just outside the 50 feet. I appreciate it. Yep. Jump in a little bit. Sure. The drainage on the proposal uh, entirely runs site runoff and away from the wet. With the, the proposal that we came up with, we've got grading all the way around the house to create the elevation so we get a driveway. And that forces drainage to go out towards the wetland and down in this direction towards the wetland, which we won't have with the, with the proposal that we've got in front. And that, to me, is a is a standpoint of the massive amount of work that has to be done here with retaining walls, all right, easements, walls all through here. Um, you're just getting into a lot of site work that, number one, has risk. I'm not saying it's an impact. It has risk. Try to avoid this. And what you try to do is avoid this, right? We don't have any impact. We have risk, and we're trying to minimize that. You minimize that by having the drainage go into a controlled situation in the driveway where we have pervious pavement and where we have a drain system that will stop the water from going across the road, control it, and take it down to the pole. So, from a flooding standpoint, we control that. 
Uh, I don't. Are you willing to are you willing to, to put this out to uh, third party review for stormwater analysis? We've been at this for a long time. Well, I mean, I mean <laughs> if you're you're asking me to buy you stormwater ask, analysis on, on two single family. Well, houses. there was a lot of talk about stormwater. Now, hold on. Both council and you have talked about stormwater. I'm saying if you want to you want to sell me on this, put up, uh, analyze it from a stormwater perspective, and, and tell me what it is. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to say avoid it. Even with you've got two engineers on. The commission, at least two. I don't know what Deb's background is. Pardon me, but she's just an attorney. You know, De Deb is most learned counsel. But thank there you. There we go. Okay. I would think that you have the resources on this panel through all the discussions we've had to assess whether there's a stormwater issue. Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, regardless of the number of expertise we have on our commission, when it's when there's a question like this, we're saying avoid. You're saying it's better if we don't. You're working for the client. I'm not saying that you're, you're being disingenuous. I'm simply saying that independent third-party review is usually the tiebreaker. You can you can submit to that if you want, or you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to say I can only speak for myself, but I'm going to say avoid it. Why in this situation is there so much grading required versus you hardly do any grading in in that proposal? I mean, why does flipping the situation require so much more grading? Yeah. I, I mean, it, it would seem if the house stayed at the same level, you would need a cut for the driveway, certainly, and maybe a driveway wall. But why why all of a sudden are you having to build the house so, up so high? Bill, do you want to address that? It's just trying to balance between the two houses. You know, you've got uh, foundation elevation, finished floor over here of uh, 129. On top of foundation over here was 134. What happens is when you start working with this, you get closer over here, you realize that you can't make up the grade from this garage level to this garage level very easily. You know, one's up here, if you're on this side, you're way down here, so now you've got to bring the garage up a bit so it can match up over here. And you don't want to build big walls, so you have to build a couple multiple build multiple walls so you keep the walls smaller. One of the problems with this and is the problem we've never is gotten it. Problem, but we've never gotten that plan to analyze, so you keep putting this plan up, but we've never had a hard copy of it, and unfortunately. Also, this plan actually was submitted formally to the commission. It was not. Never. I've never gotten this plan. You, you it sent. Was presented it was presented at the last meeting, and you admitted that we didn't have it, but we never got it. Um, I may be just speaking. I don't think I am, but that was filed July. So I have all the plans of record in the file. It's never been submitted. Okay. You can't really, because I have the record. That was when we came and talked about it last Yeah, week. it was never submitted to us. <coughs> it formally, it, hard copy. I think it was rolled out at the meeting. It was rolled night. out at the meeting. We've never received it. So that's why I'm asking the question, because I've never had the opportunity to review it. I, I have every email from Kurt ever sent, but I do not have this one or that one. Because I offered to send it to Al today when he reviewed the meeting. He said he wanted to see that plan, and I did not have it. You, you did have it, though, on the, on the video. Right. You can see it, but I, like I said, I'm you're, asking you're you about the grades in the driveways because I have never had an up-close copy of it to review. No, but that's, okay. that's true because I requested the electronic transmission and it, she was unable to do so. It was referenced in, in the video. You could see it in the video, but you couldn't put it in front of you and, and analyze it the way I, I would like to have. I'm not an engineer anyway, and you know that. So uh, I'm looking at it from a, from a, strictly from a wetland perspective. And um, I'm saying, I said it already. I mean, I, I think you can avoid. I think you can avoid and get what you want. Um, I, I, I think it's unfair for the, the, the applicant to continue to say that you know they did this and they did that and the council did that and the engineer did something else and the current did the third thing. When the reality is that there was a pretty back and forth discussion at the meeting and. And quite frankly, it wasn't done as a single one-way street. You know, listen to our to our speech and line up for the Kool-Aid. You know, we, there was a lot of back and forth on that. And, and I think the the phrase that I used was context sensitivity. And, and you don't just look at the regs and don't just look at the plan. Look at what's happening around it, and, and the things that 
the soil does become steeper. And with that steepness and the additional flow that finds its way into it comes a greater velocity which finds its way to the wetland area and the runoff to the back finding its way in that never used to get there. So those things are impacts that are the result of an alternative that we don't, don't that I didn't necessarily find desirable. So, you know, I believe about having the plan in front of me, and I can see it from here. I believe that we had enough information that yes, it was physically possible to do that, but I'm not certain what the heck we were gaining in regards to what protection. That was my perspective on it. And so I think it is unfair for the applicant to take the heat on that when. When I know from my, from my own perspective, I, I understood what they were proposing and I understood the impact for it and, and I found the other alternative more desirable to me. No, I stand corrected. We do have a copy of that. Sorry. I'm, we didn't get it. I, it wasn't distributed to the commission, so I'm not sure when. Right, we, you, you didn't get a copy at the last meeting. Had. We did yeah. not have five copies at the last meeting. So I'm not, I'd have to look back at when and they got it because I, I don't think we had it before the meeting per se. Is it something you submitted after the meeting so we had a record copy? No, I don't believe so. I, okay. Uh, Mr. I'm Manzi sure is, uh, pretty well beating up the, uh, your proposed plan. Uh, so I don't have any more questions on it. I, I am in agreement that there are alternatives to uh, this house, uh, what it is, it's not, it doesn't matter to me, it's just that it could be done. Um, you know, the garage in the front, the, the house being turned, um, you know, it's not aesthetic and, and probably wouldn't value as much, but uh, uh, I'll just go with the, I'm going to go with what the commission thinks is fair or right. We don't usually do. Uh, I mean, the house is right on the 50, and then you're going to hold driveway on the in the 50, almost at the 25. Um, okay, um, I have no questions. The um, last thing I do want to add, for just from an engineering perspective, is um, the stormwater analysis. There's a reason why DEP exempts single family residential under four lots is you can't micro analyze stormwater management. It just it's it's foolish. It, it, it to put numbers to paper and then have someone review numbers is, then it, then it is equally foolish. It shouldn't have been offered as 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 a, as a part of the process then. It was offered as a better that the the offering that was made if I recall it correctly was this was a better way to for stormwater management to have it positioned like this that, that the stormwater management would be more difficult if that alternative were built that was offered from the applicant uh, applicants people not not for me so I'm saying well if that if that's the case and and you want to sell me on the alternative analyze it and show me um, I I I don't th I don't I don't think that. I understand the bylaw on four lot subdivisions. I get it. So I'm just saying avoid avoid that area. I'm only one vote, so. So what's our plan? I don't have a plan. Um, so we've gone around the table. We've gotten comments. I don't. I'm, I don't have a plan at all. It's, I'm not designing. It's it's, uh, it's it's evident that they're resistant to a third party review. Um, on, uh, two I, I offered my opinion, Mr. Chairman. I just oh, said I think that let they, me get this thing off the dime because we can sit here twiddling our thumbs for the next 25 minutes, and I don't intend to do that. We, um, we, we have a few alternatives. Let's start with one of them in the form of a motion we're about to make and see where it goes. If it fails, we can consider further debate and take it from there. But uh, I, I believe we have uh, sufficient information. I believe that uh, some of us are satisfied with it, some of us are not. So I, I move that we close. Public hearing, initial decision. Oh, I can't do that because of the three-week window. No, I I was prepared to draft, so I have it drafted in the, the signatures pages printed. If you Move decide to close the initial decision in the morning, Second. A discussion. Sure. So the commission can vote to close and consider the decision which has been drafted. 
at the time when we deliberate, we can amend that decision. It's, it's kind of like a roll of the dice on the applicant's part because we go into the decision-making process disparate. Up to you if you want to proceed that way. You can either send us into the decision-making process in a disparate view, or you can revise the plan and avoid the resource area. It's up to you entirely. One thing before Al, Joe, are we supposed to uh, vote on a waiver first? Before we vote on the, on the plan? Yes. We have, so in procedure, we have to consider the waiver we first. We have to the, the waiver first. Yeah. Okay, and I understand that too. Um, I just wanted to just put so it out it, to the applicant first as to what they're looking at. The, w the waiver is for work in the no disturbance zone, but as written, the bylaw does not require a waiver for the driveway. It's an allowed use if all alternatives have been considered and ruled out. I have a question for you. Um, voting on the waiver, that would permit the work in the buffer zone, the enhancements and so forth. It doesn't necessarily, or does it necessarily, approve the location of the driveway? No, it does not. It affect the driveway at all? No. So, so voting on the waiver is, 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 on is the procedurally the correct thing to do, and I get it. Yep. But what I'm saying is that doesn't guarantee anything, I don't think. So it just, it just guarantees that the work that's, would be, that would require the waiver would be allowed if we vote to allow it, when and if we vote to allow it. Uh, that's all. I just wanted you to okay. know that if, if, we, if, if we close and, and we, we go to the decision-making process at the end of the meeting, you know, it, it's, it's up for grabs. Anything can Understand. happen. I'm just trying to be fair and, no. and put it out there. That's all. And, and let me make a, a comment that with regard to your comment on stormwater management reviews. Yes. And I think Joe is absolutely correct. You can't put this in, and analyze it uh, with numbers. Uh, you have to look at it from a conceptual perspective. Mm -hmm. And from a conceptual perspective, there's no question in my mind, as a wetland scientist, and having dealt with this for 30 years, and you have too, but not quite from the same perspective, this, this design is much, much more risky. It doesn't have an impact. It's much more risky. It has much more work in the 50-foot zone than the one we're proposing. You can't do a peer review that's going to come down with, you know, numbers for stormwater management on this site. There's not sufficient information, and it's too small a, a locus yeah. to analyze. Well, the, the review comes with opinions, too. It doesn't just, you know who we use. You know who our wetland person is. I mean, I'm sorry, our, our stormwater person is. Not anymore. Not anymore? Not anymore? She's retired now. Well, then. That's, there, there you go. There there's a, that's a horse of a different color, huh? Yeah. So, uh, all right, well, I get what you're saying, but... All right, I just wanted to tell you where we're yeah, at. So, so. I don't, so I don't have a problem with peer reviews. Generally, we like them because, yeah. quite frankly, they substantiate yeah. what's been designed. Uh, or they make, you know, tweaks and changes that allow it to be approved. Uh, and they make it difficult for the commissions to disapprove, <laughs> be, be frank, okay? In this situation, you're going to get an, an opinion, but we as, and I do peer review work, we don't like to give opinions. We like to base it on something that's real, factual, numerical, that we can analyze. And I don't think that you'll find anybody who looks at that design that's had some experience in wetland scientists, as science, that would say that that has a lower risk than what we're proposing. Just no way. I, I brought it up because it came from your side of the table. I never what just, was that? I, the, 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 that your, your, your alternative plan, the plan that you want, is better for the management of stormwater, stormwater. Yeah, and I think if you look at so it. So if you're saying that, what I'm saying, it, what I was saying is if you're saying that, prove it. That's what I was saying. And, and the it, it, proof I'll, is I'll, what I'll, I have given you. And you're saying you it can't be. You look at it and you're saying you say, it can't why be would I want this water small. to drain, why would I want the stormwater from this site to drain towards the wetland and not down through a pervious pavement system in here and down through a stone drain in a controlled fashion so it doesn't go across the street, go down to a culvert, and, and under Stephen Street. Why wouldn't you want that? As opposed to having the risk of it draining towards that wetland all the time. Anything spilled in the yard, herbicides, pesticides. Now you may say you can rule those out with conditions. I, I hate to tell you, and I'll be frank with you, it's, it's not a very good condition because you really don't control 
herbicide and pesticide applications in Massachusetts. The state does. Well, not to be, the, so. the other thing is not, you do want water to drain to a well and it provides the hydrology to the well. And, but I guess in the, this case, that's not the case. That's correct. That's correct. And yeah. um, just, just to clarify too on the plan, because Joe now reminds me of what they asked for and what I provided, because I don't want to make it seem like you didn't provide us with, with everything we needed. Um, you pulled, the plan he pulled out at the last meeting was now what has become the plan That's of correct. record. And when the members who did not attend the meeting wanted a copy of that plan, I was unable to provide it to them at that time. Yeah. So yes, that sorry about that. That is correct. Uh, the, the one thing I will say is having the pervious pavement in this location does provide for groundwater to come out of that system and, and go through the groundwater towards that wetland area. So the water's going to get there. It's a question of timing, control, and what it's carrying with it. And I don't think uh, there's any question in my mind that the design uh, of this system is much, much better than the one that has the uh, driveway on the other side. It's a risk issue. It's not necessarily a direct impact. It's a risk of impact situation. The, the other situation isn't without risk, though. Having porous pavement within the 50 is something that is frowned upon by DEP because what gets spilled on the driveway also winds up in the soil and po potentially in the wetland. I think that given that this is a single family home, that risk isn't overly high, but it's not without risk either. That's correct. No, I, there's, <laughs> there's not much that we do in this world that isn't without risk. Gotcha. Okay. So what's the plan? So let's be clear on procedure. The waiver is strictly for the work in the no disturb, behind, basically behind the stone wall, which the vegetation management for the Vegetation basis. management and the construction of the stone drain Swale. down through this porch. Right in here is, is 25 foot. So the right waiver there. is for those and only those. Correct. That the, under the, our bylaw and regulations, the installation of a driveway within the 50 is a permitted with an activity so long as a robust provided alternatives that, analysis has been completed. there's no alternative. That's, that's the caveat. Provided that. It doesn't, no doesn't say that no alternative. It's so long as an alternatives analysis has been undertaken. No, it, it, it says provided there is no, uh, no reasonable alternative. The words it uses is viable and feasible. Yeah. And um, there is a viable and feasible alternative. So, um, okay. It's not, it's not, it's not a, a, a waiver by right or not a waiver by law. To, but still, under any circumstances, it's not a waiver. It's not a waiver. All right, so not a formal so requested on, on waiver. On the point of procedure, he's correct in, in that we need to act on a waiver first for that other activity before we consider closing. Yeah. And to be a little more definitive with regard to the waiver, we have invasive uh, plant uh, cleanup in this portion here. We have soil remediation work, and we have revegetation. I can read it as requested if that would be better. In addition to the stone drain. It was submitted in the last. Are you looking for the waiver request? Yeah, you resubmitted it. How about if I read it to you? For lot two, management of invasive species, removal of surficial debris, and top dressing with loam, revegetation and landscaping are proposed within the easterly 25 foot no disturbance zone and installation of a roadway drainage swale. Okay. That's it. So I move that we grant the waiver in accordance with the narrative provided by the applicant as part of the NOI. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. So now I'm going to restate my motion to close and issue a decision within 21 days. Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And I'm opposed. You're opposed. I'm opposed. I'm opposing. I stand alone. You're opposing too? What's the vote? So, so it's two, two to two. two. Well, you have Shit. to cast it. Chairman has to vote. Sorry to do that to you, Mr. Chairman. No, no, we're, people at home think we're always unified in everything, and this has been a healthy lesson in the fact that when things aren't always crystal clear, and we do disagree from time to time. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I'm in agreement with Al. I, I think there are alternatives to uh, that 
want to, so I'm going to go. No, well, the, so. there's two. Again, you guys do this uh, this way. You just close an issue, so you can close the public hearing. You can a second vote would be to not issue a positive order of conditions. So, I mean, that's a good clarification. The motion was to close. Remember, starting with that means you're not going to take any more public input. Well, no. but, but but it just failed. Theoretically, okay. it so just failed. So closing is failing. So, so we're not closing. The hearing remains open. But closing, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. But closing. And, and, and taking no vote doesn't do, it, it harms the applicant. I'm, I'm trying to, I know it might not sound like I am, but I'm trying not to hurt the applicant. I'm trying to say, move the driveway. No, it seems to me that if you close the hearing. Yeah. We could have, we could have denied if the we, property. If, if we can't agree on issuing an order of conditions, yeah. then they're out, they got to, File all over again. Yeah, well, that's not the goal. That's that's yeah. that's clearly and not I, the goal. I understand you don't want to see that happen, I, but I, that's what's basically happening. I want to see a better project. So by well, by, by by not closing, the hearing remains open. And in, in, in what I think the why do we keep hearings open? Because you need more information. The better what are the areas you guys are looking for? Better alternatives. Better alternatives. Well, they were asking that. So the applicant has the alternative not to continue as well. So I guess. Well, I think we, we need to understand better what this commission requires because there's always something that can be done. You just throw money at it. We got to the moon. We've been all, you know, all over the, the place. We, we, use it, we, we do that because we put money at, at, at risk doing that. Sometimes that pays off, sometimes it doesn't. In this instance, we've got a very clear situation where it's an extremely expensive <laughs> project. The, you know, the alternative with the driveway in another location. And, and I think more importantly, is it has a higher risk of impact on the level. So what, uh, what test are you putting us through there, to try to reach three, a conclusion that this is good? As I see it, there's been three proposals before us. The one that you, this one here, yeah. is the one, is the favored one yeah. from, by you. There's the, the one with the, that's on the board right there, which yeah. is an alternative to this one. And then, and then the there original. was a third one with the driveways coming out to the street from the yeah, front of the house. There's one basically right in here and, and quite frankly, not a safe access. I, I would agree with you that it's not, that, that's not a safe alternative okay. from, a, from a safety point of view. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to see that implemented. Well, you could put a turn out in the front there. Huh? You can still put a turn out in the front. Double the 21 yeah, foot it, it, does, it really doesn't work. You can't make, you you can't make a turn. Back and they go. You need a four point turn to get out of the back out of that garage and turn around to the street, yeah. even if you put a turn. And around. people aren't going to do that. So they're going to back out into the street, and there's yeah. no sight distance coming around the damn corner because cars that come around, they're going to be right on top of you. So it's not a safe alternative. I did say you still might clip, end up clipping the 50 in, the, in doing that. to one and two, which you should probably vote separately. Um, because issuing a positive order of conditions on one might be different than issuing a positive I, I would, order of conditions. I, that is a good point, and I would suggest a vote on lot two first, because if lot two does not pass, the design on lot one will be affected. That's right. You, can't, you know, lot one would probably get approved. I think what you just, I understand that, but it can't be both. What is that? If what good is it? It, it may preclude another option on I know lot two, that. and then I know everybody that. would be you no, know, 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 dizzy. That's, you know. that's what just happened. I think what you heard was the vote on lot two. What, I, I don't think lot we, one is. We went two to two to close, and the chairman broke the tie, and it was three to two not to close. So that was the vote. Sure. I mean, the commission can decide not to close the hearing, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you'd asked me the question before whether we wanted you to close. Right. And, and we did. Okay. Um, and it mostly, it's, it's out of no disrespect for the commission. I appreciate the wrangling you're doing with the regulations. You have these regulations to apply. This is kind of a funky situation. You're trying to figure out how to apply them best. 
Um, I want you to close mostly because we have given you sort of all the alternatives we have. So you want us to close? We've given, we do, and okay. we've given you what we have to, uh, to work with. We've given you the information. We've analyzed it as best we can. We've presented that in as open and honest and, and um, sort of an exchange-oriented way. And this is the information we have, and we are asking you to, to make a decision on it. You do have two options before you. You've got a driveway on the left and a driveway on the right. Um, we've explained why we think the driveway on the left is, is better. It doesn't do us any good to just keep explaining that to you again. You've heard it. You're smart people. You've heard these issues for years. Um, and we've said all we have to say about it. Um, are, are you satisfied with either option? Are we satisfied? No, we're not entirely satisfied with the right-hand option. We think but it is But you accept practical. either option? I mean, I know you want the one that's here. Mm -hmm. But the one that's on the board there, if the, if the commission here s digs in their heels and says, we'll accept that one, but we won't accept this one, is that agreeable to you? I don't know what we do in that case. I mean, we have the commission's decision, and then we'd have we to We have the commission. You get an option to appeal it. But, uh, you know, we, I don't know what the state will end up doing on an appeal. Then we meet at my office tomorrow for bagels and we talk about it. That's, uh, well, be that. I mean, that's, uh, it won't be a we state close, appeal. If we, if we close, we can't take any more input of any sort. So that's, that's the downfall. And that's there. the only reason why I was trying to keep it open, is to yeah. give you the chance to submit more information unless you say no, no way, we're done. And just to be clear, this won't be a state appeal because this is a buffer zone. Um, Contention, so it's only this is locally jurisdictional. This is a, a bylaw appeal. It's, it's appealable. It is appealable to DEP, but under, you would have they're going to say what's the issue, and it's the it's an alternative analysis required by the bylaw that their so commission's going to gonna deny it on. So the, they're the, not going to get in. You'd have to involved. go to both both the, uh, the uh, district court and the in the, I'm not sure the DEP. DEP. I don't think it has no, to go that No, I don't think I think they'll remand it to. The, <laughs> Because I think it's you could going produce to be a something that's workable. Decision. And I guess what we're, what, what I think I'm telling you is, you don't want. We're it. out of ideas. You're out of ideas. <laughs> <All right. laughs> These were our ideas. We've spent some time thinking about this. This is not a project that's uh, been on a 30-day time frame. This is a project. So the real going scenario is, we call, we have all the input, and when we do our deliberations, we're going to continue to go back and forth, and we're going to pick one or the other alternative, and we're going to. You saw where the votes kind of laid out tonight, three to two. Um, we do have another member who could participate in deliberations, but he hasn't been at any of the hearings, so I don't think he's sensitive yes, to the. Uh, Jack has missed two, so he would not Jack be eligible been to. A, oh, that's right, wasn't. No, Jack was here for the last meeting. He, he's missed right, two. but the, he's missed two. He's so missed the Mullen two, rule okay. is typically you can only miss one and you need to make it up. Which okay, so I think you've heard that it might come down to the less desirable alternative might be what we end up beating up each other over. Um, it's buildable, gets it off the dime. Well, what, what about, you know, it was mentioned that Al wanted a, a third party review. What if you get Joe Blow, the engineer, over here to look at the, the, the options and come back with an opinion as to which one I, I would I would suggest you go with? I object to is Joe that Blow. Some, is, it, is that something you would buy? I had... I want to be clear. The stormwater management issue was offered as evidenced by the applicants' uh, advocates. That's the only reason why I said, well, if you're telling me that your alternative, the one that they want, is better from a stormwater perspective, what I said several times was, prove it. That's what I said, prove it. Get it off the dime and prove it. You prove to me that that's better from a stormwater perspective, and I will vote for it. But I'm hearing an unwillingness to do that, saying, well, you can't micromanage stormwater on two laps. Okay, well, then if you can't do it, then you can't tell me it's better. The practicality of it is it comes down to best management practices. Yeah. More than buzzwords, it's more than a it phrase. Also, it's also very opinionated. What is a best practice? Well, what DB throws it around like it's something so cast why isn't that alternative there a BMP? Uh, because, the, because the applicant We've just nailed it down. You think not, and I think it is. Uh, I'm, I, saying, I'm saying that one right there. What's wrong with that? The applicant doesn't like it. I don't know why. Um, maybe maybe it's more expensive. I don't know. Um, the deal is clear. Expense means nothing to me when it comes to that's what I'm decision making. So what I'm saying is, why is that not a better alternative? I'm only hearing 
a couple that both of them are going to put water in the wetlands because so that's restate, where the water goes. I'll, I'll restate why I believe this is not a better alternative. What I drive derive out of this plan is the swale going from the second direct lot to driveway down to the culvert is steeper. And we, because it's steeper, it has more velocity. Because of the terracing of the land, it actually introduces more water to the front getting into that swale, which now has a higher velocity. In addition, the back pitches directly to the wetland where the other alternative pitches everything out to that swale at a far more gradual, flatter slope, if you will, with less velocity. So, so the impact, in my opinion, is less in the other alternative than this alternative. It may be a more challenging site to build out, but it would. I'm it just would, telling you what I see. But it would avoid, in my opinion, that's yeah. why I find this to be a better management practice. Is it the best? Out of the two, the other one's better, in my opinion. Okay. And that's where I come from. I guess what we should be doing then is they want us to close. What we should be doing is closing and having this debate at the end of the meeting when we deliberate the decision. That's where it belongs then. We shouldn't be wasting anybody else's time here. All right, so a motion to close. So yeah, if they want to close, you want to close, we'll close it. Then they restate. So they. If you want to close, it will close it. I do, and I'll still ask your question that you asked a couple of minutes ahead. ago, yeah. or answer your question you asked a couple of minutes ago. If if you had specific information that we thought would be helpful or a design change that you see that we don't see, we're happy to hear that. But we we feel we've exhausted the alternatives. Yeah. We've tasked our design team, um, our project team, with doing the exact things that the the regulations request. We presented that to the commission the best way we know how. Yeah. We've um, suggested the alternative we think is the is the best one, is the most practical, and we've explained why we think the other <coughs> is not practical. And um, I mean, with that, that that's why we're asking to close. Okay, so if there was something specific that uh, that a, that a commissioner saw or wanted a particular type of design change, it's not that we're resisting that. It's just that we don't have those to to offer ourselves anymore. We've offered all all the options we think are available. Okay. All right, then I respect what you want. I'll make the motion to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Is that for both hearing both hearings? Yes. Yes. Okay, you made the motion. Was it both? I moved it. Out. I moved it. That if the applicant says they want to close, that's I understand English. It's closed. Two four two seventeen. Two four two seventeen twelve. Two fifty five. Hey, madam. Continue to nine thirteen. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion. Next one is uh, two four two one seven one six one forty six Main Street. Chairman, the plan to just. For record, so I have it in my file uh, that alternative for the show of the second driveway. We, we did get, get that? the one with the two in the middle. You you do have it if you recycled from last meeting, then I have other copies. I have everything, I do not have that plan. I never had it last week. Okay. You should have it in the file. I, I have not. it in the file. Okay. Um, so 2, this project, I, I didn't put up the plan again because the plan has not changed. Um, we were waiting to discuss with the planning board whether they were, were going to require a modification of the special permit that was originally issued to Sutton Pond condominiums to do this work. Um, the applicant felt that there's, there's lots of legalities involved in this, as you all know, and lots of parties involved. The planning board felt that what's been done to date is adequate and that the they're not going to require that, or they're not going to. The applicant originally filed it, withdrew it, and then they're not going to seek to have it refiled, to my knowledge, after discussions with town council. Um, there was also a, an, an ask by someone if if DPW had been contacted, and a street opening permit is required, but that's not generally something we seek um, prior to closing a public hearing. So I think those were the sort of questions that we had at the last meeting, unless you can recall anything else. Then. I think that was it. Uh, good evening, Scott Cameron with the Moore and Cameron Group. Um, 
I did send out the one email regarding there's a question the oh, dam. on the dam. <coughs> I sent out clarification. We had covered that uh, with one of my engineers. So. And I did send that to you, Joe, right? You I, I got that, yep. So um, with that, um, I have drafted this one, and we can close an issue if you're so inclined. Move that we close this decision within 21 days. We're ready. Well, tonight. any questions? Second. Any questions for us? Doug, any questions? All right, motion. I don't know if there's anyone Joe. present on that, but. I don't know if you have a butter. Any butters here? No. Okay. No butters answers. All right, Joe. Move that we close this decision within 21 days. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's the answer. Next, <coughs> next one is a uh, enforcement order, 810 Salem Street. So this was from um, some time ago when it was discovered the applicant had just purchased the house and um, asked for some time to consider what was, was what the options were basically. Um, oh, that's a lovely plan. Um, as you recall, the, these are the two houses that are on the um, corner of Salem and Blue Ridge. They were constructed under one order of conditions. I believe they're 810 and 812 maybe, or some, somewhere in that neighborhood. So this is the first one farther away from Blue Ridge. Um, the order of conditions required that there be a post and rail fence along the entire riverfront 100 foot, um, and annual mowing was allowed behind that fence. Um, at some point, prior to your purchasing of the house, um, the fence was removed and a backyard fence was put up. Is that correct? Just want to spend a couple months on yep. <laughs> um, That left the whole area from the edge of the backyard fence out to the road along the edge of the driveway unprotected. Um, so in discussion with the owner we, and, and um, I did a site visit and we discussed what was out there and what was required um, per the order and then you allowed them some time to come up with a plan. Great. So I'm Brooke Page from 810 Salem Street. I was asked to present our working plan for placing the fence. Um, we understand that the perpetual condition calls for a post and rail fence, and what we'd like to propose is actually loose field stone. So we're looking at about a two foot high fence um, that would follow that exact fence line um, and would also include a gate like the one that we currently have in the backyard. So I do have some photos of what the backyard looks like, if that's helpful. So I'm, I'm here to ask if the commission would find this permissible. And that's the gate you're referring to? Like bond, bond gate? Okay. Aerials of what it, it looked like um, back when the the prior owners. I think these are 2012 aerials. Oh, thank you. Perfect. That's great. Thank you. I guess just to be clear, would you be proposing the stone wall all the way or just from where your existing <coughs> fence is out to the road? So it would be the existing fence line. So there is a stone wall remnant on the Salem Street side itself. It yep. would follow that edge of the driveway where the drainage rocks are. Yep. And it would connect to that white fence. To the white fence. Okay. So it would connect to the existing backyard fence, which I have to say is probably a little closer to your house than what's shown on the plan, just so okay. you know. Okay. They'd almost be giving up a little more backyard. But if it were to be reconstructed at any point, it could go back to the, at all at any time to the existing hundred foot. I would just, given the posts that are out in the field right now, I think it's probably a, your white fence is a little closer to the house than the hundred foot line shown on that plan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Questions, Joe. But this is kind of ironic, is what they're proposing to do is what we typically would have required to begin with, and it was a waiver to grant the, not a waiver so much as a, a relaxation on our part to allow the post and rail to begin with. 
Uh, the fact that we're getting a stone wall is far more substantial than what we'd expect. Up to a fence, which is a pretty nice looking heavy fence. A gate for access for mowing, which is one of the other requirements, is, is, is a logical request. I, I, Jen's point is, for an eco it can, it can, it cannot, excuse me, for an economical reason, be going up to the existing fence. But for yard yeah, utilization, you actually could go further up. Maybe not by it's much. Not much. Not yeah. by much. So, you know, having it give up a little bit of the, the area between the 25 and 50 it seems. Academic it's not actually point. 25 and 50. This is the 100-foot um, oh. riverfront, no the, disturb. Okay. Oh, there is a 25 and 52, but that is further, is closer to the river. Right, riverfront. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a very favorable uh, offering. Yeah. And no questions at all. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank I you. agree with John. Okay. No questions. Motion. So I would just um, rewrite the enforcement order to allow them to install the stone wall at the hundred foot as required by the order of conditions, and then you could do the work. Is there a time frame? Like give them a year to install the wall? Six months. I, it just we're getting late in the season. I don't know how soon you intended I'll, it. I'll move it that way. I'll move that. To to do it a year. Your suggestion. Okay. Second. I mean, it's been good faith. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed and that's all set. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'll write that up, Brooke, and send it to you. Thank you. Next one is uh, two four two five forty eight COC request for four ninety nine Wave Road. So this was an order of conditions issued um, to um, do work that was then permitted under a later order of conditions. So this one became invalid and was never constructed under under this file number, but it sits out there anyway, as recorded and never done. Any questions, Joe? None. Yeah. No questions. Yeah, no questions. No questions. Question. Motion. So issue a um, COC for an invalid OOC. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed and that's unanimous. Who seconded? Sorry. Doug? Yes. Go here. Deb L. Deb L. One of us. Next one is uh, 242 1626 COC request for 1141 Turnpike Street. So this was the slip lining of the um, culvert at the National Grid property. Um, as you recall, a pretty substantial project that was completed two, two years, years ago. Right. Um, but there was substantial um, buffer zone restoration, wetland restoration, and they had done some tree cutting as well and some tree replanting and um, those sorts of things. Um, the slip lining, I think, went off pretty much without a hitch. Um, impacts were less than what was anticipated. Um, as you recall, at the back of the site, they ended up um, putting, uh, they came in for a modification to put in a fence at the edge of parking lot and actually did plantings behind that fence. There were some areas, especially that area, which is at the back of the parking lot behind the dumpsters and also served for some time as the snow plow area that were harder to establish with planting. So um, a bunch of that area was replanted this past spring. Um, we've met that 75%, but I'd say that was sort of right at it. I think we lost a few other plantings to um, some weed whacking on the property prior to some fencing being installed behind the culvert that was repaired. The head the wall head was, wall, yeah. Um, but the in the trees, they um, as soon as some of that canopy came down on the side of the building, the bittersweet exploded, and they spent a lot of time pulling bittersweet off of their new tree plantings. But um, I have to say, after multiple site visits, and um, we got all our reports that, that everything is doing as well as can be expected and meets the 75 you know, percent requirement. Um, and there will be need to be some invasives management to keep those trees thriving. Um, and I think most of the other areas are in the process of reverting to natural and, and doing fine. So um, we have Mr. Novak from Conoco here to answer any questions specifically no questions. about the slip lining. I will just get the uh, vegetation. All set. I'm all set. No questions. Thank you. All set. Okay. Thank you. So we got a slip lining. Thank you for your time. All right. 
sorry to drag you out. That's but. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it's a motion to issue a full and final CFC. Okay, motion. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. There's no extra charge for the entertainment. Aye. 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 Hey, I've been on both sides. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Just happy it wasn't him today. Yeah, that's no problem. Two, four, two. 1628. Yeah, CFC request 143 Lacey Street. So I have a couple of photos for this one. Um, I think the old, um, this septic system was, was permitted a number of years ago and the work was done a number of years ago. Um, I think that owners were surprised to find out that Donna had sent them a letter saying their order of conditions had not been closed out in their um, order was about to expire. Um, they thought when they received their Board of Health certification that, that the engineer and had done everything to close out the project. Um, I was able to get the file from the Board of Health and get their certificate of compliance and their as-built plan. Um, the issue is the as-built plan does not contain topo as required. And when consulted to get that topo, the cost was substantial so I suggested to the applicants that um, or the homeowners that they seek a, a letter just saying that the the system is 90 feet from the wetland I believe it was supposed to be 91 or 93 um, this was just a reconstruction of the leach field but as you can see from the photos that system sits within a retaining wall that was never touched within a grade that couldn't be changed because it's the top of the retaining wall and is on the other side of the driveway for the well from the wetland so they could get that letter at substantial cost but um, I didn't think that that was necessary and so we're bringing it to you tonight missing some pieces of information but in my opinion with substantial information to prove that the project is constructed in substantial compliance with the order of conditions Joe? long story yeah, and it, only because we're going to, we're likely to do something that's unusual, and that's to grant compliance without all the documentation. But thank God there's physical monumentation of structures on the yard that prove yeah. the alteration wasn't possible. So I'm all, I'm all set. I, I agree with your recommendation. My, qu my question, Jen, is for you. You are uh, someone from staff has been out on site? I, I took the photos. So you went out and took it? All set. Yep. All set. Done. All set. Motion. I move that we grant the uh, COC request. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is uh, 242441 COC request for 51 Long Pasture Road. So uh, this one, I guess you could. Um, I did not review, and um, as you know, 51 Long Pasture is from some time ago. This house actually has a um, PCOC for um, the structure on, on the lot, but the PCOC is very specific to only the house. And that is because also constructed on the property is um, a wetland crossing and um, uh, compensatory storage for filling a bordering land subject to flooding. So Kale has poured through the file to find all the documentation that m might be necessary to close out this order of conditions and you have, a, I don't know if you want to take time to, to read the engineer's letter in front of you, which he also reviewed some of the prior information that was out there. So you have both the engineer's letter and um, Kale's review in front of you if you want to take a moment because like I said, I'm not as familiar. One of the things Kale pointed out to me is that what can't be confirmed from what the information in the file is that all of the bordering land subject to flooding was constructed at the elevation that was required by the order. The plan that's out there gives sort of a range of where it's constructed and it doesn't seem to be in the range that was required by the order. I, I'm not sure I'm stating that properly, but. That's correct, you're not. Maybe Mr. Christensen can explain that to you further. Do you have the rest of the drawings that they sent? Um, I'm a, I 
you may have them in your file. Well, I, I don't know if, Al, were you on the board in 87? Yeah. No. You were, Joe? Oh, no, no actually, no, in 87 I was not. I, I got on in 90. <laughs> it doesn't make me any younger, you, but... Uh, <laughs> so this was long past your lane, 1987. This, this, this would have been when Richard Doucette... In 87, Richard Doucette was the administrator, and everybody that was on the commission then is not... Right, and... Uh, Kyle Shaney. But this, came, this, this, was, this was a long, protracted... It, we it, had something to do this, with this was litigation. Right? Well, this got litigated, and it went to DEP for a superseding That's order. what it was, yeah. And, and then that, it was an adjudicatory hearing besides, because yeah. of Plazinski. And, and we were part of the superseding discussion, because this thing was still in the system when I came on. Right, um, right. It kind of took on a life of its own for a while. So it finally got underway. Yeah. And one of the things was there was an area there and we did submit all these plans with the request. And I submitted PDFs of them too. I might, I might have them in my It's in their packets. Uh, so it's it's in Sorry, you do have the plans in your packet. We have what? The, you have these two plans in your packet. Okay. Yeah, long so, packet. So there's lot six. Yep. No. The areas that got filled was right here. Boarding land center was proposed to be filled with the five years. Boarding land center was right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Now, one of the things about that is it wasn't technically bordering land subject to flood. What we had was there's a wetland here, there's another wetland here, and there's wetlands farther down. The complaint by the neighbors was that there was a hydraulic connection between here and here. Correct. In reality, there wasn't. And when you went out there, you didn't see it. It wasn't like there was a stream channel or anything. There was some underground connection between the two. So there was basically everybody said, well, okay, we'll call it bordering land subject to flooding because what else can we call it? But it wasn't like you have a, a pond and you know where the, it floods to, or even a river, and you've got a real flood elevation. So we did the best we could, and that's how we came up with uh, the bordering land subject to flooding area. As I said, this one here is really an elevation. It straddles the 104 contour. Now, is that the as that's the design plan? Right he has built up on the screen. Okay. And you, we submitted a detailed as built plan. This is another one I brought up. The blue line, or bordering land subject to flooding replacement area, which is about three times larger than what we filled in. This plan here? Yeah. yeah. And there's a 104 contour that goes through there. And this straddles that 104, just the same as the 104 was between, if you look at that other plan. Let's see. Just like that 104. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So there weren't any volume calculations done in the original application. It was just area. Area at? Particular elevation. Basically, it was area from the wetland out. We'll, no, not from the wetland, from the boarding land subject to flooding. We'll pull this grade back. Mm -hmm. That That's what was agreed upon. So that, that's what we did. But it was agreed upon according to the order of conditions at elevation 101 to 102? No, it was 104. It says. Um, there's another one down below. It states that 345 cubic feet of compensatory storage be constructed between elevations 101 and 102. That's the second one. That's, the That's across the street. Further yeah, north. Right down the bottom. Oh, okay. On lot eight. And there was more than, more than that down there, too. So it was, it was terminology used. It wasn't really appropriate for what the area was, but it was a way to make everybody happy. So now uh, they can't get the property closed because there's an outstanding order of conditions. And they've really done, all the work was done except that the owner of the subdivision never filed for the certificate of compliance for the road. And that's not what we're doing tonight. We're just saying at least for this lot, any work that was required on this lot has been done. I documented for you that the pipes that are built that discharge into it, invert elevations, and all the rest. So, I would 
just add Attorney Ray Vivenzio from Ms. Bavagallo. It's a lot more, at the time she bought the property in July 2002, the partial certificate of compliance was issued for the structure, an occupancy permit was issued for the home. At that time, that's all the banks or whatever lend, mortgage lenders were looking for, that and an occupancy permit. Those things issued, that was the end of it. And then, you know, 20 years later, it comes back to bite them in the uh, derriere. And uh, because it's only a partial certificate of compliance, but since the housing crash, the title insurance companies, the lenders, they're much more strict on uh, underwriting requirements, and uh, anything that could show up on a title insurance policy has to meet their okay. And you know they see this, and even though the construction of the home was okay, it still makes them nervous, and you know they won't allow this thing to close without a no, an ordinary certificate of compliance. Thank you, Joe. That's sort of a generalized statement. Certainly, the, the lenders and underwriters have uh, gotten more strict, but um, they do accept partial certificates of compliance, but that's typically when a lot is contained within the subdivision that's covered under a general order of conditions with no work specific to the wetland on that lot. The fact that there's work here, that's what triggered it. Work on that lot, that's part of the condition, that's what triggered it in this instance. And they probably always would have, probably always should have. But um, that, that aside, I'm satisfied with Phil's explanation. I, I believe that the work on this particular lot at the 104 contour, by pulling that out, met the condition with regards to compensation. Yeah. I agree with Joe. Yeah. I agree. Good. Motion. I'll move it. Uh, I'll move the reissue. It's a partial certificate of compliance for all work on the lot. Is that correct? That's what they already have. Uh, we're releasing the, the lot from the They already have that. They're looking yeah. for yeah. complete certification. It cannot be a p complete certification because we cannot close out DEP file number 242441 because not all of the work is on this lot. But we can fully release all work on this lot from that. That's why my discussion was the way it w was. Right. It's There's no way to partial. issue a certificate of compliance no. for the entire subdivision because it's it's not in full compliance. Right. But on this particular lot, it is. Right. And I think the, the, the so how certificate we, how of we compliance, state that. we can state that. On, just type, We've typed many things in that partial certificate of compliance. So the last one stated it was only the house. So, it was very yes. clear. So This one will state that all work related to the crossing, wetland replication, flood storage, whatever you wanted to say, on this just, lot is in compliance. So you're saying you're unable to do a complete certification as to lot six? Correct. No. No, not as not well, six. No, no, no. But it's still no. a partial certificate of compliance it's, for you, this. You can do a full certification as to lot six, but don't, they cannot issue a full certification for the subdivision. Right. That's the well, difference. That's it still that's has to say part. partial. No, yeah, yeah that's, make sure, I know what you're saying, and that they're not saying the same thing. It Are you looking for the whole partial. subdivision, Ray? No. You're just looking so for the lot. Six. Yeah. So, so, we, so the instrument we have to use, since it's is not partial. the whole subdivision, is partial. However, the, the explanation, the, the underwriter is going to have to read the words and understand that all work associated with Lot 6 are obligated under the original order has been completed and is satisfactory, and therefore Lot 6 is removed from that. Right. Yeah, we can release that we can, we can release it that way. Now, okay, whether they read it that way or not, it's up to them. I just note that says the project site is located at 551 Long Pass Road, Lot 6. If we so. issue a full certificate of compliance, the order of condition gets it, a full certificate of compliance. Which it's not capable of getting. There's no way to issue full certificates of compliance for a DEP file number more than once. You can issue all the partials you want, but you, if you issue a full certificate of compliance, the project is closed out. But you will say specifically I will that say anything you all, want me to say on that line. <laughs> all of the work done on lot six, as required by the, the order, order of conditions, conditions has, has been, been satisfactorily completed. And I, yeah. I can, I can lay out what each of those items is if you would like. Yeah, well, I think. Language to that effect that all work required all work. Yep. applicable to lot, lot six. six. And, lots, and lot six yeah. is released. You can they send have to me read your that, digested, and Ray, yeah. Ray, you can you can write it and send it to Jen. Just as you just said it. <laughs> you can write it what you want. I don't want to make it hold it up. I'm just I just know that we cannot if we we can only issue one full. Yeah. So we need a, P, a motion yeah. for a PCOC on. For all work on lot six. On lot six. So you have it. You have a motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those in that unanimous. Was that Al Deb? Al Deb or? Yeah. Yeah.
He's okay, got, I'll he's, take it for the... Yeah, I was just going to say, he's got a pile of it. Leave it to you, Jen. I'll take that one. All right. um, I'm sure Kale has it. Like I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get to do... I listened to what Kale had to say, but I didn't get to review it myself. Um, so the first is the order of conditions for 146 Main Street. This, What is it? New sewer septic, whatever you want to call it, pump chamber. Sewer pump chamber to service 146 Main Street, Sutton Pond Condominiums. I'm looking for it. I only have one decision. That's the one you have. I, I'm holding, I wasn't sure what would happen with 271 Stephen Street, so 242, I. 242 that's what we're looking that's for. That's what right? we're looking at. Okay, I got it. Um, Gregory Smith. Yep. Okay. Um, Kale's done some updates to our standard order of conditions, and one of her pet peeves is condition 38, that the sign shall remain visible throughout the life of the project until a certificate of compliance is issued. It's harder to, you know, know what projects are open if they lose their sign, so um, we added that language. Some signs are still up there from 30 years ago, and some fall down in three days. Right. Yeah. So, um... And some people do install permanent signs about their DEP file number. I don't know how I feel about that, but it is what it is. Um, bond? I don't, the bond on this project isn't something I would even begin to fathom calculating, but I, I view the risk of, of impacts as very low, unless you know there was some kind of sewer explosion, <laughs> which one wouldn't anticipate in any... I wouldn't even venture a guess. I mean, the, the only threat here is some cowboy getting into the road not realizing it's a dam and he's, you know, he's calling the touch boy to plug it up because it's leaking. Right. But that's going to be a catastrophic event and Absolutely. probably not bond You can't bond it. You can't bond it. So I put 3000 sort of, I mean, it's what we bond a single family home. That does, this does not seem more impactful than that. Um, there's no real drainage work, so that there's a lot of erosion control conditions, monitoring. I said no stockpiling within 100 feet of the resource area, but um, I don't think that's, I think they talked about stockpiling on that paved area that would be in, so it's going to be within, it's going to be within riverfront area, and I don't think it's possible to stockpile outside the 100, so I think we need to just state that all, all stockpiles need to be contained with um, erosion controls. Um, I would guess any concrete washing would be prohibited on site, but I don't see that the, they'll need, this is going to be a precast structure, I'm guessing, so there wouldn't be any concrete. Um, if they need a dumpster, I would assume it also probably needs to be within, on that paved area, and that would be within 50, so I will modify that to say dumpster shall be within the enclosed work area. Um, Oh, this, this is also a site where wetland markers are, all of the work is basically off-site, so I'm not going to impose Sutton Pond Condominiums has its own wetland. I don't think we need wetland markers along that bank. This is a very flat area with a, you know, with a stone retaining wall, so there's really no place for markers up there. Um, I also don't think we need the fertilizer landscape. Again, there's none of that that goes on over on this side. And I suppose we could keep the no dumping of leaves if we find that to be unapplicable. Thoughts on that? Do we need a fertilizer condition? No. And what about the dumping condition? I've never observed any dumping out here, but it's at the yeah. dam, basically, sure. is where we're keep that one in. Yeah. I mean, yeah, keep it in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that. As amended. Okay. Motion. Move that we 
Do we do we amend anything? I don't think we did. Well, I, I put things in there for discussion, so we technically amended okay. it. Okay. So I move that we adopt as amended. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Nope. nope. We can't. We, we can't. have 271. We cannot. We yeah, we, we, we got to take the gloves off. We we have a pile in front of us that we oh, have to deal right. with. We've got to deal with it. I keep this on. Can I, uh, can, uh, let me see if I can get this off the bubble real quick. I'm going to offer. Oh, here's the order, sorry, that I drafted. Where is it? Which one? For Stevens? Right, hold on. Yes. Mr. Chairman, give me, give me a second here. To, so, it appears that as you are all aware, my problem is with the location of the driveway for lot number two. Okay. Would, and would, would, would the members of the commission consider leaving the driveway where it is and directing them to make it out of these? No. And tell me but why. Believe it or not, the thing I pressed hard on at the last meeting, two meetings ago and at the last meeting, was the fact that you just can't say porous pavement. You need to have a cross section that's properly designed and properly constructed. And you go to UNH's stormwater program and you get that cross section, which is available free. And you just put it in your, and they did that. So these don't have any capability of, of having any subsurface infiltration. Those, those only treat it as if it were a lawn area. Where, where porous pavement absolutely positively has a, a full cross section, if you look on their proposal, going down two and a half feet, but those don't. So I, I, I don't think that that's an alternative to, okay. right. to the porous pavement. Um, I mean, I, I'm going I'm to make it just simple. My, my problem is the location of the driveway. Uh, that's the only thing I'm having a problem with. Everything else I'm fine with. So the other alternative that's still proposing porous pavement for both driveways. There. And there, yes, that's way a steeper, and yes, the grades do pitch to the back. They do that now. They don't do that now. They do at some point. Would you get up to the no disturb? They do. We're telling them to not disturb it any further, so that will always continue to be there, but it's being protected by a wall. Right. So if we do go with the other alternative, what we don't have in the wreck, and we'll have to be very careful to state it in conditions, is the requirement to put a continual stone wall back there for 25. No plan will show that, but I have to say that in words. We have to say that the invasive. Uh, vegetation management is only within that 25 foot up to the resource area and only there and that all other areas that the other plan shows to continue to be done yeah. is verboten you know to do that so we have to state that in words and the conditions no they they already took that off the table right yeah what did they take that was off the not table? yet off the table yeah oh yeah they're only the the new Disc narrative that you got today only proposes buffered invasive species mitigation up to the existing stream. But the plan doesn't show that. That, that alternative doesn't show that. Th that alternative, the, the one from before, does it have a note on it? I don't know. No, because again, they were still proposing to do it up to the meeting that we did some horse trading. So that, I mean, pull the plan out. I keep going there. No, I, we don't have it. <laughs> we didn't get it. We did. I had it. You had it in 11 by 17s from the last meeting. Well, I have the entire. What, that's what there. they submitted. So this is. You're talking about the. No, it says revise no disturbance zone. Yeah, they were still. They were still showing. Oh, the planting breaks in, beds. Yeah. Planting beds with breaks in the wall. And the planting plan is on the next page. Yeah. And still right. doing it. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, we'd have to condition all that. Yeah. So it's a continuous wall. Of the same thing. If we yeah, go they wanted to go all the if way. If we go to where to the vote went towards the other alternative, we have to specifically now describe the things we're not approving on the record drawing because we don't have the ability to get record drawings. Plus they extended that driveway too. On the uh, the double driveway, it goes beyond those. Yeah, it not does. That it matters. It's a turnaround to get out. They have it's to. Not, they, it's they, not the, they don't have the width. Wait, wait, what? I'm sorry. And even at that, they had to get an easement from the from the, the abutter. Where? What? This. 
Well, that's only because they walked in the, the lot line before they got their Conservation Commission approval, which I advised them not to do. I mean, seriously, that, that that's exactly the point that I was trying to get to. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. They painted themselves into a corner, and then they said, I need a waiver to get out of it. Right. That's the only thing that I'm having a problem with. I, was there six I have no ago. problem with this damn project. I want to approve this project. I want to see They, it they filed the, um, the, the A&R with the planning board, and the planning board only has a set period of time where they have to make that decision, and they can only deny it based on a set number of things. But when the zoning board was considering their waivers, I sent them a memo saying nothing <coughs> that they did could, could put a hardship on the commission to require um, That's right. the commission to grant them additional waivers. That's right. You sent that document. I sent that memo, right. and I gave you a copy of it. Yes, at the that's first correct. Meeting. That's exactly right. And I'm not saying that the zoning board did that, but they they did approve certain waivers, or there were things discussed at the zoning board that they brought up as being things they couldn't change because the zoning board approved them. It's like a catch-22. But see, that's again, that was part of the presentation tonight. We, we got beaten over the head with. Well, this is the way it is because that's where they put the line and blah blah. They're unwilling, they're unwilling to, to try to make it workable. I, I I think it's workable. They can get what they want. They can get two houses, nice lots, revegetation. They can get the whole thing. I think there are different grading alternatives that they could work. But what they, you know, some of this for them is about aesthetic, and so that's why I was asking why raise that house up so high, but they want them to like be at the same level. I, they could they could construct that house at grade and the driveway lower. There would be a retaining wall. I, it, there is a retaining. But let me let me be clear. <coughs> if you're standing at the if you're standing on Stephen Street looking at the property, yep. From where the existing house is to the to the swale that nobody could to the culvert that nobody could find except me. It's a significant drop. It's a huge drop. So the further you move this driveway to the north, you're driving it by the grade of the roadway that much right. higher up. Yep. Tells you where that driveway needs to be, which now dictates where you. Well, it could also be a cut, though, is what I was saying. Keep the house, you know, make it, a, make it work with the grading more than just saying the driveway has to be up here. They even said that they some of what drove their decision was the fact that they didn't want the disparity between houses to, to be great. I heard that too. Well, the thing about it is cost is not supposed to be a, a factor. Uh, aesthetics so so factor so let me just ask the question can we can we vote for this option and make it work is it possible to make this option work I mean it's not our job to make the, the job easier for them I, I think short of straying from what was debated during all of the hearings including the last meeting the first meeting and the one tonight I think we run the risk of redesigning a project that will fail on appeal We'll we'll fail an appeal. I think we have to approve. How do we, how do we fail? Now, what was debated in the in the in, in the course of the hearings were, no, you're going to put a continuous stone wall all the way across, and there's going to be no planning bed. And you and no, you're not going to do any sort of uh, invasive management in the resource area or the other side of the resource area. That's off the table. We will allow you to do invasive man vegetation management control in the 25th no disturb on the project side. That's all. We have to say that because this plan doesn't say, doesn't propose that. No, but you're losing me on wh wh why why would this plan fail on appeal? I don't understand. If we start redesigning and changing elevations and grades of driveways and foundations, no, we're, 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 this is their plan. But we'd have. I'm saying we should stick strictly with their plan. Yeah, this is the. I think they make make their plan work. No, no, well, no. I mean, what we I'm saying is, I guess I, I, I asked the question incorrectly. I, I, let me rephrase it. The plan that's here, this plan that here, which I'm going to call alternative number two is there any reason why we can't make this the plan in the order of conditions is there any reason why we can't only by stating the things that I stated everything else there they can build and they even maybe acknowledge that they may not desire to but they could build that I think that's what they wanted us they wanted us to pick one for them. that's why they said close it we're not offering I don't think they more. wanted to pick one they have a clear of preference. Well, they, I, I understand the their same. preference, but they also, when when I explained that we're going into the deci decision disparate, do you, don't you want to go back to the drawing table? They said, no, we don't. We're done. This is what you have to deal with. Make your decision okay. off of this. That's what they said to us. 
They said, we don't want to stay open anymore. We want to close. You guys make your decision. So I guess I'm asking, since I was the big mouth and don't, don't like the first alternative, is there any reason why we can't just tell them to do this one? Well, I think, you know, from a con and I haven't been here for all of your decisions forever and ever, um, but from a consistency sake and what you're going to base this on is that the commission, you know, requires this re constantly on every case and, you know, you've granted other driveways in, in the, in the no-build before. I've seen them. I've done COCs on them. Some of them are still open. I, I just want to be sure that this is the same sort of we've never alternative. Had a, we've never had a, a newly created lot put in front of us looking for a waiver. With, with alternatives. With alternatives. That's, that's, the that's thing. what separates That's what makes okay. this unique. Yeah. We have a, a newly created lot that didn't exist before that ZBA sent to us and said, okay, you now have two lots. Well, planning, but yeah. Whatever. Yeah. However, that, that 63, 1963 lot line was still in place and they were coming with that same thing proposed, I think we'd be hard pressed to put them through a robust alternatives analysis. But because of this recent change of the lot line and, and any variant zoning board process, I, I they, but it also, they did create a hardship. We, we, I think we were all on the same page six weeks ago. From that perspective, <laughs> I don't believe I was brainwashed, I, but I, I believe that looking at what they could have done with that old line and what we got in return gives us a more favorable position. It actually moves everything 14 feet further to the north than that old 63 line, which reverberates right back to less impact to the, to the resource. So I think the ZBA, even though they created the hardship, it actually relaxed what would have been a greater hardship from, from, from 40, 44 years ago, 54 years ago. So I guess my, my position would be to tell them that this is your plan. That would be my opinion. That would be my vote. It's only your votes that matter here. So I'm just going to lay it right out. I made the motion. Doug seconded. Doug and I seem to agree with the premise. I don't know if it's based on the same reasoning. I don't know. Doug was quiet at no, that I... point. But the other three voted it down so they've got something else in mind. That's what I'm, I'm looking to hear. Well, I think the, let me ask Al, the only reason you don't like this alternative it's because the driveway is in the 50 foot no yeah. build zone yes now we talked at one time of having a gravel driveway and do you seem to be okay with that yeah and the grass block pavis yeah. even earlier yeah i mean you said tonight earlier that, what about these i mean, you seem yeah. to be acceptable of that yeah now you're putting porous pavement in which joe i think is the one that uh, suggested that to yeah. the applicant and said are you are you willing to do that well because i think they offered gravel and joe said let's be honest gravel over time is going to compact yeah, well, which is will. true it will and uh so porous pavement seemed to be acceptable acceptable to the client so to the applicant and uh, acceptable to the commission at least it was the last hearing what? And this seems to be the, this particular alternative, given the two of them, okay, the drive with the, the other one being the driveway on the right side of the building. This is a better design, better layout for the structures. The only issue is putting a per, per uh, pervious pavement within a 50 foot no build zone which is an artificial zone discovered by some tree huggers and pushed on all the damn communities well, so the state doesn't even recognize that the state okay? is the, the state is the minimum standard well the state whether, standard whether everybody should go by the state standard whether period it's the wetland protection the act or the national electrical code bullshit. or anything the state is the minimum the life the absolutely the minimum Every every so, municipality in this Commonwealth has I, the right I to exceed. I find this to be a much better design than the other alternative we have to, to better, choose from. Better how? Better because it's less land disturbance. 
the issue with the pervious tree, I don't think it's harmful to the, to the uh, wetlands. I think and, the, my, yeah, sorry. the only thing that would, I agree with Doug and Joe on the um, impacts to the wetland from either design. I think, it, I think it's a wash. I think you have a lot more site disturbance with one and you're still, I mean, lawn, pervious driveway, this is all going to be usable space on a single family house lot that people are going to do what they will with and we're not going to be able to police that. I think the port, it's, the, it's, it's, but a, it's about us permitting. It's about your it's about bylaw us permitting and your. A, a, a new lot right. that was created by a variance that once we permit that, we're going to eat that for the rest of our time here. I, every applicant who comes in front of you still has the burden of meeting that requirement uh, no, for alternatives. Listen, if, 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 you can all vote for it. No, the question is. I, I just won't. <laughs> okay, the question to me is how you going to harm the wetlands? And I don't think this harms the wetlands. Well, you, I you're think asking. The yellow one has more of a chance of, of harming the wetlands. Well, you see, this I, does. I don't agree with that. I, I well, think you don't I, have to agree with it, but that's well, where I'm coming from. I realize it. So that's you where know, you, I, that's where you, you would. Know, I don't want to get stuck in this 50 foot no no build zone and stuff like that. Say, oh, we got to stick with that, like well, Sean does at times. You know, he's well. That's what the law says. We got something we got to go by. Doug, that's where Bullshit. I am. Bullshit. You got to look at the wetland. Are we harming the wetlands? Well, I think not? I think we are, and I think we've harmed it over the years. I don't think we are. I think that over the years we've harmed it substantially in this town, and I, I think that we wiped out. If you want to ask where we've harmed them, right on, uh, right across from Mad Maggie's Ice Cream, where that Mexican restaurant is, we allowed that to go in there, and there are no longer any Blanding turtles in there, and there were Blanding turtles. We wiped them out. We, we absolutely harmed it, and we had a, a cadre of engineers that came in here and told us, and environmentalists said, it, it, no problem, this won't hurt anything, that won't hurt anything. They're gone. They're not there anymore. And that's only one place that I can name, but we, we're at, we absolutely are. And, and, and the, the buffer zones are the only protection that we have. The, the, the level spreaders and, and, and lawns and buffer zones are the only things that protect the groundwater recharge. And that's what this is about. Groundwater re recharge that's returning back to Stevie's Pond. Um, and, 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 and the, the groundwater. That's, I know. I'm just saying that's 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 everything that we're supposed to be doing. I think we're groundwater recharge. Both alternatives accomplish that. So that that it's not a valid argument. One alternative versus another. They both propose porous pavement. They're both well, trying to get it out. Of the I don't know what sort of subsoils are out there. Probably pretty marginal since the threat I think of the they're brook. Very is, marginal. Since the threat of the brook is where it is. And but the that's why you construct that base the way that it's yeah. constructed. Yeah. If this one is no no worse than this one, then why not tell them to build out? They still get what they want. It's going to be. I said from a groundwater recharge perspective. I, I still. Look, I've said it once. I don't need to say it again. Out of the two alternatives, the one with the driveway that stays out of the 50 has greater impact, direct impact to the resource area up in this corner and the steepness of the soil. Those two things alone convince me as compared to the driveway that is porous that gets the water down into the subsoil and works its way into the resource area in the culvert it's very short circuited it's not going to be there long um, I, I just see that that's for, it's a better perspective listen, the vote doesn't have to be unanimous you know call it the way you want it I, I you know I'm, I'm not going to jump off the Empire State Building if, the, if, if I get outvoted so just call it it doesn't have to be unanimous I don't think we've ever done this I mean I'm just not going to, I won't on, on vote a decision, for it. On decision, I guess. Well, it wouldn't be this way if the applicant had just t taken it back to the drawing board like we asked, but they wanted to play this game and dump it on us, so here it is. I told him it was a disparate thing, and he said, okay. So, you know, council knows what disparate means. <laughs> so, so, so We've sat next to each other for years. And, and, and very and often we, we have we not voted. And we will. Yeah. And but we seem pretty clearly divided on this, you yeah. and I. And unfortunately, our brothers and sisters on this commission sometimes align with Joe, one or the other. Joe, I'll still drink a beer with you if, if this version passes. I'm just saying I cannot vote for it. I cannot. You guys can, and I'll still love you. I just can't. So call it and vote it. It doesn't matter to me, you know. I, I'll get my vote. I think it's fair game to have a straw poll because 
Jen is going to have to craft a decision based on something, and right now we're just all over the place. Well, I crafted a decision based on the forest pavement driveway because when we left the last meeting, the, the unit, you know, the general gist of the conversation seemed to be that's what we would be approving. So that's what I crafted a decision based on. All right, so, so let's just take a straw poll of the record drawing, the, the one that's more the alternative amiable to the applicant, the applicant, right. which has the driveway with. Well, do you want to review the conditions that I, I drafted this for it before? Here. Is that yeah, what? Let's take a straw poll okay. amongst ourselves. Okay. We, we saw the where plan. the motion went for the plan, and then we, we, then at that point we can get into detail. Deciding what the record plan for page one of the order of conditions will be. So I'm in favor of the one that has the driveway porous pavement with, a, with some of it in the 50. And you are not. No. I'm in favor of the porous pavement. That leaves it to me. And you won't hurt my feelings, right? I'm telling you. You won't hurt my feelings. Yeah. I'm telling Believe me. I'm on the fence. I, I'm not I don't I'm not particularly crazy about all the drainage going into the wetlands. It seems like it's a more of an impact uh, versus this. Um, but I I um I just when there's you know, the turning of the house, the drive the garage door in the front. You know, reversing the house. There's numerous ways of them to. We to can't come up with a third alternative. Yes, yeah, sure. we. No, I'm saying they can. They no, could no, have. No, they boxed us. It's too late. See, well, we. You can deny an application for, for. You know, for failure to for um, lack of information, no. basically. We, uh, that's how I think he's on record that he's yeah, no, no, they, they they very carefully. Uh, he, he did a brilliant job of saying you've gotten what you've you got. got what you you've got what you need. Make a decision. It's on us. We boxed in, so don't run away from it. That yeah. we, we get paid the big bucks. Make the vote. Okay. We, we well, can, it sounds we can like disagree. there's three of you if, who will vote for one plan, and two of you who would vote for another. Well, you can make so a recommend. Clear. You can make a recommendation too. You know. Yeah. I already said that I I don't think from a wetland impact statement that this is a, this is the discussion. I don't think it's about that. I think I think it's about whether the alternatives analysis required by the bylaw has been met, or you know if this is not um, the if you if you reasonably can't get this. If you reasonably can get this driveway out of the 50-foot no-build zone, you are supposed to do that. Okay, so, so you've just you've just said you just made a very compelling argument. Either alternative have pros and cons with regards to the impact of the wetland. None of them going to have it. None of them is going to be great for it. But it's, it's a wash. It's a single-family house so, lot. So meeting. with all else being right. equal, if, if if one is not more favorable than the other, the argument of favorability to the resource goes away and then it's strictly compliant black and white yeah, it's, I want, I want it's strict compliance with the bylaw i want to read the language of the bylaw for you before you make your decision because i think that's a, another key piece is exactly i didn't decision. bring my copy up yeah, so. yeah, we, have to, we have to get 21 days eh? yeah but we have, if we don't make the decision tonight then it, go, the tonight then it becomes then, then they oh, get we have a special meeting we either have to have a special meeting or they get a superseding order so we got to get this done tonight has to get done. No running uh, away from uh, Right, Doug. And I'm not Once more onto the breach, Doug. There you go. Once more onto the breach. Make a decision tonight. Make a decision. You know, fish or cut bait. That's what we got to do today. I'm going to read you the language in the uh, regulations. Zone, getting to buffer zone. Minutes to vote in 25 minutes. Yes, we're talking about you. Yes, yes. <laughs> so performing. I hope they got a big close up of you on TV right now. No, you can't give a close up of her? Mr. Producer, you got to get those cameras adjusted back. That's those are Isolated. Uh, here we go. Buffer zone. Right. Everyone and pay attention. Just for Doug, here's all the reasons why we have a buffer zone listed in the bylaw. <laughs> you should give Doug a copy of it. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's ready. Right. Hey, 
they I'm are. not in favor of local bylaws. Okay. okay. So, so construction of any. Have, I'm not zoning bylaws, but All right. conservation. Okay. I never have. I believe. Marblehead, I was against it when they brought it in in the late 80s. I believe you. So halfway through the 50-foot no-build zone, it says driveways, roadways, retaining walls, and landscape boulder walls may be allowed in the 50-foot no-build zone when no other feasible location or alternative means of access exists. So no other feasible location. So the operative word is feasible. feasible. And that's, and yeah, so, which is... Which is uh, so what, what, oh, I mean, no, are we saying that's not feasible? Why it's operable, yeah. It's however you want to interpret it. Some will say it's feasible, some will say it was in the front. They're worried about safety. We're not involved in safety. It's not up. Back into the garage. I mean, if you deny it, you're going to deny it based on the fact that it's, they have not, they've presented an alternative that's not feasible, but that they're not willing to put in front of the commission. I get well, they've presented an alternative that's, it, that's feasible. They've, they've given us an alternative there that is, an is, alternative is it's feasible. It may not be. It may not be their preferred alternative. Oh, it's but it's feasible. You can build that. It works. Uh, the the yeah. only thing that it's it may not be financially fit, financially viable. But, but that's not our consideration. Not an issue. That's not, not our issue. consideration. Finance, so. though, I'm not, I'm not it works. It's feasible. It's fe feasible. It's not preferable to them. Mm. Preferable to them, right? Mm. Lou, you ready to cast your deciding vote? Preferable to them. No, I, I, like I, t I told, I said there's more. Alternatives on to, to do this on this plan that they're willing to to, uh, to exercise. But that's it, off the table. These are the two that I these know. Are the only so, two we have. So I'm going to say no. No one plan. What up, what if, if, <coughs> what other alternative to the two that they presented? To well, there's the you, garage you, in front. You, front. you could turn the house. Yeah, but that's not in front of us. I know, that, I know. That, that's well, not he, he's no, asking but I want to hear what, what, what you do <coughs> see as an alternative that, that could, could be you looked at. You could turn, at turn the house. Considered. Could have a one car garage. That was never, I mean, there's all kinds of alternatives. It's just. Put the garage in the front, turn the house, or turn the house around, or angle it so that the, the garage would be in the front, and you could. You could you know, I've got a, I've got a shocker garage. for you, too. You know, a lot of houses don't have garages. Uh, there's nothing that says that that's by right either, you know. That's a shock. Yeah, but I will, I'd be willing to bet that they have a second story of the garage. They're not going to build a small house. I, I don't know. We it, it, cannot delve into other alternatives. Those are the two in no, front of us. No. That's it. Yeah. So it's either this one or this one. Yep. Well, if they if they weren't willing to do the second one, then they never, they never would have drew up a plan. No, oh, that's what the, you're exactly right. right. They, right. They, they left that in front of right. us because that's. I agree with you. They never would have drew up that plan. Exactly. Uh, they wanted this one, but I don't. I don't understand. I have the elevations at the time. My eyes aren't that good. Why, children? Why does the, the drainage have to go into the wetlands? Why can't it go well, down the side of the house? If he's trying to hit 123, 123, 13 is a spot grade at the driveway. He's trying to hit that, and he's trying to hit finished floor elevation of 125. He's only two feet, not even two feet. He's, a, he's one foot eight inches higher than the gutter grade of the driveway of the, of the street to the to this garage. Yeah, so but he says he has to build it up three feet. To well, that's what I'm saying. In order to hit that, otherwise you've got the street pitching down into this. So he's giving himself some sort of a break to keep water out of the. You know, from coming down and getting into his driveway. So he's just giving a slight pitch from the gutter up to the platform here to hit 125 at his finished floor. So he's only a foot at 148 higher than the street gutter, which pulls everything up at 125. Again, over here, for a street, gets your finished house. Okay, this is the foundation wall, because it's top of the foundation. He's only got 10 feet from finished floor to top of foundation. You know, OV garage, which has to be what eight inches lower than your cellar, right? Okay. So there's your there's your ten foot grade elevation at 120, 134 for your top of foundation. Take you two feet for exposed foundation. Takes you 132. There you are. That's where you're at. It's all because he's trying to hit the cutter grade in the street. Why? Because you're that much further up the street. You you're literally. 
10 feet higher in elevation uh, than you are at the culvert, street grade of the culvert, and still 122. No, it's, it's because it chases up. The street is actually pretty flat in that area. It's the, it's the lot that breaks fast. It's actually going downhill. This way. It is, yeah. It's going downhill. Only by, a, only by a foot and a half. It's not so steep. Yeah. It's the it's the lot itself that's steep. It's coming to the street. That's what mm -hmm. that's what's killing them. They can control it. Yeah, but 132 to 120. There's your 10-foot break right there mm -hmm. from one quarter of the lot to the other. So that's why this ends up high and why this ends up having to pitch out. Because you we're not we're telling them you can't go past the 25 note to serve. You have to blend it and meet it there. So it pitches out. Again, it's not mountain goat country, it's it's pretty flat. Now reasonable. But it's gonna shed that way. Same logic coming up. Again, he's trying to hit existing house. That's that's the issue here. Is that house is at 133. That's what's making him have a retaining wall. Is because it's the garage under. If he flopped the house, the house would still end up in the 50. I'd re we'd obviously would rather have driveway than a house in the 50. Yeah. It's because of where his finished floor elevation has to meet that requires a, a three-foot first level retaining wall and then another five-foot retaining wall on the other property line to hold that lot back. So he's got terraced retaining walls to hold that these driveways apart from each other. Four feet between the two. 126, 128. With 125 at finished floor drive was going to be a little lower than that. Then he's coming out to bottom of wall at 126. Yeah, and know. then the first tier is at 128 and the second's at 130. The only way we really make it work is to take the building, angle it, and run it this way. But then you got to get a variance on your side yard setbacks. Right. And if you can get that from the ZBA, then you could make it do it. And you could keep the driveway out of the 50-foot zone and be fine. But then it would look awkward compared to the, the Two houses looking at them, they would one would be facing like that, and the other one facing like that. So, I don't think yeah. I mean, that's a that's an alternative for them to look at, but there are, there are I doubt if they want to do that. Alternatives that they could use. If they just decide to have a line in the sand. So, so yeah, so we have a line in the sand. We have to make a decision. You know, I'm just if based on not enough alternatives, I think we should go down. They engineered it. I didn't build it. So the, the second alternative, the one that wasn't the preferred alternative, um, we did approve 865 Johnson with the plan not showing continuous walls, so I don't have any issue with, uh, with um, conditioning that. And we can condition the restoration on their narrative, which is specific to where and what, yeah, not the plan. the plan. The narrative that they drafted for um, the restoration, the buffer zone restoration, is the specific to applies the only in the 25 foot no, no disturb, disturb zone, correct. closest to the development. Yes, not on the other side. Correct, but their their narrative is states that. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. So we're gonna go with option two. Option two with those additional conditions. So yeah. that is the plan dated July 27th. 2017. Yes. The other thing is we could reference the restoration as shown on the mitigation the plan no. dated tonight, the one that's dated. No, that's not good. Every revision doesn't change the drawing number. Okay. That's just a file number. All right, gotcha. So we would base the um, the mitigation on the mitigation plan, only the mitigation on the mitigation plan dated August 15th, 2017. Yes. That would be mitigation only. Um, now the, uh, the town came oh, out. Mitigation and stone wall, sorry. The town engineering department came out and looked at the, at the, uh, 
proposed project, but I assume they, what they approved was this. They weren't approving anything. What they were saying was um, the, the, the work being done in the right of way w was something that they could live with, basically, in their yeah, right of way. But that's this, what's shown here. Um, I don't that's think not the same thing on the other one, is it? They don't extend it as far on the other one, and I think they were trying to stay out of the 50 on that. They could extend it in the same way that they do on, it's still the same swale. I think, you ha I think they have to get it down to that drop off where, where I saw the culvert. As long as it's constructed at the same grade and... There, there was a reason why they couldn't take it. It had something to do with grade, but I... Because he, because he's at, because he's matching. The, the other grade. thing is, you know, we can approve the, the design as proposed uh, for the construction aspects of it, and if they want to alter it, they can propose a, an amendment or a minor modification. modification. Yep. As, as has been said, this is their plan. Yep. Um, well, unfortunately, at the last meeting. Yeah. This is what was indicated to them that would be approved by the commission. I, I got that. So they went back and they, they modified, came back with this, with whatever modifications we talked about. They took the other plan, which was the, the uh, driveway on, on this side of the house, well, basically off the table at that time. Okay. So any changes or whatever is shown on this are a result of our discussions at the last meeting. And, you know, what it sounds like to me, what they ought to do is if we're going to be in favor of alternative B, we'll say, that they ought to modify that plan to... We can order as pre-construction that, that a plan that... To, to depict this stuff up in here and whatever changes to the drainage thing that is going to make sure it's going to be satisfied with the town. They're okay. going to be happy with it. To, um, to comply, they, we need to issue in 21 days, which would be the date of the next meeting. So basically, we'd have to be prepared to hand deliver them the order of conditions of the next meeting. We have 21 days to issue. We can't take any more input, right. including documents. They could request, However, we can they could condition. Request, they could request to reopen the public hearing. Well, if they want to do that, they can. But right now, we've got to issue a decision based on what we have right here. I can, I can, between we, we, referencing the different documents, the narratives, that that's fine. I, I, we we have the July 27th plan for the for the layout. We have the August 15th plan for the mitigation. Right. Um, the only, I'd say the details plan of August. 15th, except it contains the forest pavement driveways. And is there a details plan with that set? But it does not have the forest pavement, because that was something we asked for. So it would be the details oh, plan of July 27th, too. Well, well, yeah, because forest pavement wouldn't be required on the other Right. One. I just want, I was saying we can't reference August 15th. We'd have to use the July 27th. So, um, as far as the order goes, that deals with the um, documents of record. Um, I did, they had only proposed compost filter sock on this site. I think they need a trench siltation fence, so I had conditioned that. Yeah, I wasn't going to. hay bales and silt fence now. You want hay bales and silt fence? I feel like when you're trying to do um, invasives mitigation, it's not a great idea to bring well, hay bales onto on the site. That, on that middle driveway. They can. Um, it would be trench siltation fence with 12 inch compost sock. Okay. As long as there's trench fence with something in front of it, I, I feel pretty good about that. Um, so the only, uh, my, one of my questions on the order became um, when you wanted the wall installed. We usually require the wall and the mitigation to occur first. And I think they'd probably have to given this site. Well, they're gonna go up and do, do the uh, restoration up there. So what I said is prior to house construction or when invasive species removal is complete, the applicant shall permanently delineate the edge of the 25 foot no disturbance zone. I guess the question is, do you want to require the invasive yes. species removal prior to construction? 
You yes. want the species removal and the, and the construction of the wall. The wall. That's a, that could be multiple applications of going in there and... Well, it would be the initial. Okay, so initial. I'm fine with that. Just as so, long as once they hold the wall off after success is proved in two years. You want to, I mean... Well, that's the other thing, is if they need to be in that area, then we probably don't want that wall constructed while they're conducting invasive. That's why I conducted, I said, prior to house construction or when invasive species removal is complete. So that they're not putting up the wall while they're still dealing with invasive species. I mean, they're not, the short answer, the short, they're not going to get away with not having a wall at the end. So I don't really think if, it's. If you think they're going to make multiple applications, hold back on the wall. That, their I description talks necessary. about treating things at different times of the hold, year. So. Hold back on the wall. Right. Hold back on it. Um, we're not going to need the deed restriction because it's not going to be porous pavement. Sure it is. Sure it is. They're still proposing. Pavement? Not on that. I don't no, think not on this. No, not on this. No, they're not proposing no. it. Okay. Yeah, we don't need it. Um, and then I, I guess, do we want to um, bond lot two, the new lot, higher than lot one, which would be my. Well, all the the majority of the invasive species removal and new house here, construction is on lot two. The real impact here is is the invasive species management. You know how much when you walk that the soils is it's all compost. The overburden is all compost. So how much of that they dig it out? How I guess unless they actually know the depth of that, none of us are going to guess. But that's where your impact of this whole construction is. So a typical single family house we bond at thirty five hundred. Five grand. Five grand. And then the other one I'll just bond at 3500 No, I'd say both at five grand because there's invasive There's animals. very little invasives removal on the other one. It's just if you oh, look up in that plan. top corner. This one's easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, it is. It's on both. Sure it is. What I'm, I'm saying is there's substantially more on lot two than on lot one. So. Thirty-five to twenty-five. No, no, no. I, I think we need to bond lot two. It's brand new house construction. That's automatic thirty-five hundred dollars. But then, on top of that, what do you bond for the invasive species removal? Joe was saying another fifteen hundred. That's why they get it to five. That's why. I'm, but I'm saying there's you do you would do that initial thirty-five for lot one as well, wouldn't you? Right, but lot one is an existing house with an addition and a driveway being proposed on it. So I guess on that one, I was saying maybe just thirty-five hundred total. Well, it's not. It's, you know, you're saying it's a, it's an existing house. And it's staying. But the only thing would be to be left would be the mailbox. No, you know, that's not what they're proposing. That. It's a huge addition and it's a driveway. Right. I mean, you've got a gut that house. I, I think you know, if we've come this far. I think five thousand on, on both. Okay. All right. All that's left is a vote. All right. Are we done? No, we're not done. We're not done? We're done with the order of conditions. You have everything you need for that? Yes. Okay. So th this. I move that we. I move that we uh, outside of the description, um, well, yeah, you should probably vote them separately. Yeah, this is going. Se 1707 is lot two, the new house. So what's the vote on that one? Move that we adopt the order of conditions as amended. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. And I move that we adopt the order conditions as amended for 242-1708. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Now you can adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So Hold on. Hold on. Are you all set, Chair? Yeah, she's just said. Deb, yep, Deb, and. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You want a second? I'll second. All right, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nice.